It's the weekend we've all been waiting for. Championship weekend here at the USPBL. Hello and welcome everybody. That's Kara Wolfbauer. I'm Brendan Shabath bringing you our Thursday night matchup between the three and the four seeds in the 2023 USPBL Championship. It's the Unicorns in last place against the Beavers in the three seed tonight. And Kara, this is kind of what we expected. The, the standings really never changed from the All-Star break. Mammoth's finishing first, Hopper's a couple games back in second, then Beavers and Unicorns, they'll face off. The winner tonight will play at 7.05 tomorrow against the Hoppers for a chance to go to the championship. This has been an interesting season series between these two. Unicorns have struggled with offense all year long, like we've talked about, but last weekend against the Hoppers, they did pick up a win in the final game of the regular season. Two and 15 in their last 17, you know, after as the season ends, but a win in the last game always has to feel good. Yes, Unicorns last Saturday doubleheader against the Diamond Hoppers. Then ended, ended up losing the first game. However, coming into the second game, really did absolutely fantastic. Like we've talked about before, they're not always the best at coming back late in the game, but they did a great job. Had 16 hits overall last Saturday. Came back in the bottom of the six and scored five runs up on the Hoppers to put them up nine to six that day. So the Unicorns could be the comeback team today, even though they were in last place. We can see what happens so far. It's championship weekend here at USPBL, and we know anything can happen. Absolutely, and the Unicorns are going against the Beavers team who has had a pretty consistent offense all year long. It's had its usual ebbs and flows, but the positive for the Unicorns tonight, they have Andrew Huffman on the mound, a reliever of the year candidate. He's been more of a starter in the second half of the season for the Unicorns, but the thing that stands out with Andrew Huffman, he has absolutely dominated the Beavers all season long over 22 innings and a .79 ERA in his outings against the Beavers. That offense has to be looking to get to Huffman early. That's the only chance they really have, it seems like. I am expecting to, to be a pitcher-dominated game today. We have Greg, Greg Lukanen on the mound, who has been with the USPBL three seasons now, but only has seen one championship league so far, one championship weekend with us so far a couple years ago. And he's on the mound tonight for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. And I think the Beavers have a great bullpen on their side as well. So we'll see how they do against a Unicorns defense offense who can be very hot and cold. It's uh, going to be a battle, a race to the bullpen, so to speak. Whichever offense can get the opposite team to go to the bullpen first seems like that might pay the dividends to get them to win the rest of the way. So the winner of this game, as we mentioned, will face the Hoppers at 7.05 tomorrow. For the Beavers, as you mentioned, Greg Lokanen on the mound has pitched in these playoffs before. That was two years ago when he was the reliever of the year. That was in the 3-4 matchup back when he was on the Mammoths. Came in in relief. The Mammoths ended up losing that game. The Hoppers would go on to be the runner-up in the USPBL. That season but he's a player who in college and in independent ball here at the USPBL wherever he's gone he plays well in the big moments and in the big games we can expect that again from Logan in tonight yes we talked to the assistant manager Karn right before this and he was even saying that Logan is the guy to come in for the Beavers this game and he is the one that would be their go-to he was with the Mammoths a couple years ago so Mammoths like for example Jelikowski would have a pretty good read on him considering he was his pitcher so that maybe could help everyone out tonight but we'll see what we end up with Beavers have won the season series against the Unicorns in 12 games. They edged them 7-5. to five. The run differential, big time for the Beavers, plus 27. But that's aided by a 19-3 win and an 11-1 win. So if you take those two away, it's a pretty close season series. And again, like you mentioned earlier, anything can happen in the playoffs here at the USPBL. Yes, and for example, last season, we've only really seen in the last couple years the Unicorns and the Beavers taking away wins here in the championship game at USPBL. So this year... The stats kind of flipped this time. This year we actually had the Mammoths on top who had been more of a recurring number four seed. They really clinched the number one seed early on. Like we said, since All-Star Weekend, we kind of knew which way the standings were going to end up flying towards. But Unicorns ended up taking the bottom half this year. So Unicorns are not used to this first playoff game look. But So we'll see how they do today. Like we said last weekend, they did end up having a great run for it at the end of the game. So I think it's going to be how well they can power through this weekend because they've got a long weekend ahead of them if they want to take that championship game. The only two teams to ever win a USPBL championship trophy are playing tonight, the Unicorns and the Beavers, and a run for either one of them to maybe win another one starts in just a couple minutes. We'll be back with starting lineups and pitcher comparison. We're also going to announce the winners of the yearly awards here in the USPBL Network. Stick around. We'll be back after the break.
We're getting ready for the eighth establishment of the U.S. PBL playoffs since the league's conception in 2016. Those two teams on your screen are the only two teams to hoist the gorgeous silver U.S. PBL trophy at the end of the season. The Unicorns have won four U.S. PBL titles. The Beavers have won three. Before we get to first pitch tonight at the end of the season, as the regular season has completed, we do have to select our annual U.S. PBL award. So we're going to toss it to our public address announcer, Johnny Grab, in a few moments, and he's going to announce the selected all-U.S. PBL team, the all-U.S. PBL reserve team. We have the batting champion, Ray Hilbrick, who will be recognized the home run champion is Joe Burke of the Hoppers, who's going to receive an award as well. And then the teams, the, the defensive champions, the reliever of the year, the pitcher of the year, the, the, the developmental player of the year, the Jim Essien Sportsmanship Award, and the league's most valuable player. The candidates will be announced, and the winner for the first time ever will be announced here on Jimmy John's field. Those Candidates and the all USPBL and USPBL reserve team have been announced on Twitter. If you're just itching to find out who the candidates are, you can go check them out at USPBL on Twitter, also on Facebook and USPBL.com. But you won't know any of the winners. There's a couple of really close races as far as who the defensive player of the year is, the reliever and the pitcher of the year. Michael Esposito is a candidate for both. He's given up six hits entirely in this season. Opponents are hitting 0-92 against him, so he's likely going to hear his name called for either one of those. MVPs is going to be a close one as well. Burl Dixon, Chris Davis, Joe Burke, a couple of guys on that list. It's going to be a, a fantastic sight to see which players come away with an award. We're really, you know, just thankful that we got to watch them this season. Some of these players have really taken a risk to join the USPBL coming from all the way across the country and to play their dream of professional baseball and join us here. So we'll get ready to toss it over to our public address announcer, Johnny Grab, who's going to have the award ceremony in just a few moments. We've also got some videos for you as well that will be coming on the live stream if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or My Michigan TV. As always, we greatly appreciate you. And in about 30 minutes, less than that, 25 minutes, we'll have first pitch between the Beavers and the Unicorns here on the U.S. PBL Network. The annual awards coming up in just a few minutes. Before we get to the awards, we've got to bring you tonight's presenting sponsors for our quarterfinal matchup between the Beavers and the Unicorns here on the US PBL Network. As always, brought to you by Ascension, Belfort Property Restoration, Budweiser, Dave & Busters, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarbcom, Jimmy Johns, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Refrigeration. Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers. Pepsi. Scott's. And United Wholesale Mortgage. We thank all our proud sponsors for everything they do for the US PBL and the US PBL Network. Gray skies overcast. A wrinkle in today's game is the slippery grass out there. Nobody took on field BP. The tarp was on as it was raining here at Jimmy John's Field earlier before this game got ready to get started. So we'll see how that plays into tonight's matchup between the Beavers and the Unicorns. Again, the winner will face the Hoppers at 7.05 tomorrow. You can catch that on the US PBL Network. And then 6.05 on Saturday. Championship Saturday in the US PBL between the Mammoths and whoever they face, either the Hoppers, Beavers, or Unicorns. We'll get the playoffs started after we announce the annual awards with Johnny Grab, our public address announcer from the field.
First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. They call me Prospects since the day I was born as a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward, not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Back from Jimmy John's Fields, getting ready to start the playoffs of the 2023 season. This is how we got here. The Mammoths have been the best team all season long. 27 and 18 their record. They finish nine games above the 500 mark. Three and a half games up on the Hoppers in second place who finished the season at 23 and 21. Beavers, a couple games behind them, two to be exact, at 21 and 23, and the Unicorns. We mentioned it in the pregame, and to reiterate, just because it's a, a pretty impressive stat when you just look at it from a numbers perspective, perspective, two and 15 in their last 17 games, 17 and 26 overall. It has been a rough go of it all season long for the Unicorns. The offense has significantly struggled, something we're not used to seeing from a Jim Essien managed baseball club. But anything can happen in the playoffs. We have seen a number of four seeds make their run to the championship game. The Beavers all-time, 7-3 and three in these USPBL playoffs with three titles. The Unicorns, a game behind, 6-3, and three, but they do have that extra title, four championships, a couple of runner-ups for them as well. The Hoppers in these playoffs historically, 2-7, and seven, with two runner-ups back in 2018 and another one in 2021. The Mammoths, who didn't join the league until its second year back in 2017, they're 4-6 and six in the playoffs with a pair of runner-ups as well. They were second place in 2017 and 2019. They won this game last year as the four seed before losing to the Beavers in the semifinals. The Beavers would go on to win the championship a season ago from the second seed. So they're trying to defend their title starting this weekend. And the mindset is you just have to win one tournament one three-game tournament, win three games straight, and that's all you have to do no matter what the season has been like up until this point. All of that goes out the window when that first pitch is thrown on championship weekend. These players know that. These managers know that. The assistant managers, the broadcasters know that. Everyone is aware that anything could happen, and that's what makes playoff baseball so much fun. Tonight is going to be about the pitching. Greg Lukanen and Andrew Huffman, the matchups for each of these teams, Huffman for the Unicorns, Lukanen for the Beavers. Lukanen does have USPBL playoff experience. One game two years ago when he was on the Mammoths. That was in relief in the three versus four matchup in the 2021 playoffs. Andrew Huffman, no playoff experience yet in the USPBL. This is his first year with the league as you see him getting warm in the bullpen right now, but he's been dominant all year long against these Beavers. He's been dominant all season long in general for the Unicorns, a 2-5-4 ERA in almost 50 innings of work. Better numbers than many pitchers in the league for Andrew Huffman. He's a guy who's kind of split starts and relief appearances, 18 total outings for Huffman, seven of them starts, mainly coming after the calendar turned into August. I think Jim Messian realized later in the year what a weapon Andrew Huffman can be towing the slab at the start of games instead of coming out of the bullpen. That's useful to have. We'll see how many pitches he goes tonight. Typically, the pitching changes once you reach the playoffs. We often see the bullpens be utilized more than we would in a regular season matchup. That changes with the three and four game, though, because obviously both teams have a plan to win tonight and play tomorrow. And if you're doing that, you have to plan ahead for tomorrow. 
whereas a team like the Mammoths, who only play one game on Saturday, they will throw as many pitchers as needed to win the USPBL championship. Johnny Grabs ready for us. Public address announcer with the USPBL 2023 Sweet awards. The 2023 All USPBL team. At first base from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Joe Burke. At second base from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Luis Acevedo. Shortstop from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Ben Wilcoxon. Third base from the West Side Woolly Mammoths, Alex Garbasic. Outfielder from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Chris Davis. Outfielder from the Utica Unicorns, Nick Pastor. Outfielder from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Ray Hilbrick. Outfielder from the West Side, Woolly Mammoths, Burl Dixon. Catcher from the West Side Woolly Mammoths, Zach Beadle. Designated hitter from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Malik Bolin. Starting pitcher from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Ryan Carolden. Starting pitcher from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Ryan Mann. Starting pitcher from the West Side Woolly Mammoths, Garrett Martin. Pitcher from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Michael Esposito. Pitcher from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Christian Stelling. Pitcher from the Utica Unicorns and warming up in the bullpen, Andrew Huffman. Utility player from the West Side, Woolly Mammoths, Dre Williams Nelson. And utility player also from the West Side, Woolly Mammoths, Fox Liam. Next, we present the 2023 All Reserve Team from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, outfielder Bryant Schellenbarger. Designated hitter from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Noah Marku. Outfielder from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Joe Califoot. Outfielder from the Utica Unicorns, Josh Baker. First baseman from the Utica Unicorns, Lucas Gooden. Starting pitcher from the Utica Unicorns, Tristan Harvin. Starting pitcher from the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Chris Kelly.
Starting pitcher from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Jake Armstrong. Pitcher from the West Side, Woolly Mammoths, Cal Coughlin. Pitcher from the West Side, Woolly Mammoths, Nathan Witt. Pitcher from the Utica Unicorns, Jace Bauman. Pitcher from the East Side, Diamond Hoppers, Brett Irwin. Pitcher from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, John Buculaire. Pitcher from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Nick Bonk. Pitcher from the West Side, Woolly Mammoth, Jonathan Hobb. And pitcher from the East Side, Diamond Hoppers, Luke Drummond. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're all US PBL and all reserve team. And next, we would like to recognize this year's leading hitter with a 340 batting average. Congratulations to the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Ray Hilbrick. And next, we would like to recognize this year's home run title winner with eight home runs. Congratulations to the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Joe Burke. Ladies and gentlemen, champions require great defense. Check out the video board for this year's 2023 US PBL Player of the Year candidates. No more breaks, dog, it's time to break hearts. I don't take disrespect, I From take the side, I'm in the Zach mirror Beal. looking at a work of hard. Hard work to me, if it ain't smart. Ooh. I'm gonna run the plan to the max. So if I don't know you, don't owe you, I got a tax. I got enough sense and I slip through the cracks. And I dance on this part like a mask. I'm not idols, I look up to all my past. And from the West Side, natural road, back to CB. Had the CBBB, I've been watching what they feed me. I like when she tell me what her body language like, that she need me. See my third eyes on left eye, I can't let them easy eat me. No, sir, I don't even do flu shots. Click with me. Everybody. And with his tremendous range and incredible arm, this year's USPBL Defensive Player of the Year is the East Side Diamond Hopper shortstop, Alex Pop. And our next award goes to the reliever of the year. And the candidates are. Because the devil's got my eyes. With his 1.42 earned run average, striking out 38 batters in only 19 innings, this year's reliever of the year is the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Michael Esposito.
And our next award is for the USPBL 2023 Pitcher of the Year. And here are the candidates. For the game, I guess. From the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Ryan Colvin. From the Mammoths, Garrett Martin. From the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers, Ryan Mann. From the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers, Jake Armstrong. From the Beavers, Michael Esposito. And from the Unica Unicorns, Andrew Buckman. Opposing hitters hit only 149 against him, and he led the league with 71 strikeouts in only 49 innings. This year's Pitcher of the Year is the Utica Unicorns, Andrew Huffman. And Andrew Huffman is warming up in the bullpen. Paul Nochi has been with the, le the league since its inception. First as the manager of the Eastside Diamond Hoppers and now in the capacity of the field coordinator. Mr. Nochi has mentored many USPBL players that have gone on to sign major league contracts. Our next award is named after him for the Developmental Player of the Year. And the candidates for this year's Paul Nochi Developmental Player of the Year are... Sir, how are you? Get lost with me tonight. Paul Nochi Developmental Player of the Year Award goes to the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, J.D. Stubbs. Our next award is named after the Utica Unicorns manager who has been a part of the league since day one. He's had a career in baseball that spanned over 50 years, including four U.S. PBL championships. This year's candidates for the Jim Essien Sportsman of the Year Award are... From the East Side Diamond Hoppers, Bryant Schellenberger. Call me a fool for thinking maybe Beavers, I Marcus could John. get over. West Side oh, Willie Mammoth, Pearl Dixon. Than the fear in my mind. See, Mama always told me I was meant to be alive in the darkness. But I feel like a cat. And the 2023 Jim Essien Sportsman of the Year Award goes to Bryant Schellenbarger. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, our final award this evening goes to the most valuable player of the league. And the candidates for the USPBL most valuable player are... From the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers, Chris Davis. From the West Side Bluefields, Pearl Dixon. From the East Side, Donna Hoppers, Joe Burke. From the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers, From the Unica Unicorns, Nick Castor. Providing excellent baseball excitement.
and all season long with power, defense, and great hustle, the 2023 U.S. PBL Most Valuable Player of the League Award has been determined to be co-players, Most Valuable Players of the League, the Eastside Diamond Hoppers, Joe Burke, and the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers, Chris Davis. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our 2023 awards ceremony as we present our candidates and winners. Let's show them our appreciation for the efforts and talents of these incredible young men and a great season. Congratulations. Those are your 2023 U.S. PBL annual awards. To recap, your Defensive Player of the Year shortstop Alex Pup, who's been a hole in the six hole all season long for ground balls and line drives through that left side of the infield. Your Reliever of the Year, Michael Esposito, an 092 opposing batting average. He's given up six hits all season long out of the bullpen. There's a chance we see him tonight in just a few minutes in this game between the Beavers and the Unicorns. The pitcher of the year, the guy you are going to see in a few moments, Andrew Huffman, the starter tonight for the Unicorns, finishes with a 2-5-4 ERA in 49 and two-thirds innings of work. Congratulations to Andrew Huffman. The, de the developmental player of the year, named after the field coordinator and one of the founders of the USPBL, Paul Nochi is first baseman J.D. Stubbs, who you will see tonight. J.D. has improved so much from last season to this season, not only as a hitter, but as a defender as well. He's a leader in the clubhouse for the Beavers, and he rightly deserves that award. The Sportsmanship Award, named after Jim Essien, the manager for the Utica Unicorns, belongs to Bryant Schellenbarger. The right fielder for the Diamond Hoppers is one of the best people you will meet in the entire league player, coach, employee, whatever. Bryant is a league favorite. He's always smiling, always has something nice to say, always laughing, and the kid's pretty darn good at baseball too. And your MVPs, plural, this year for the second time in a year in a row, or excuse me, the second year in a row, we have co-MVPs, Joe Burke, first baseman for the Eastside Diamond Hoppers, and center fielder for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Chris Davis, two guys who are the epitome of what a professional baseball player can and should be, guys that everyone in the league looks up to. Names that always come to mind very quickly when you talk about the best people in the league, the best players in the league, and rightfully so, they are your MVPs of the 2023 season. Just a few minutes away from first pitch, we'll step aside for a quick break, and when we come back, it's Hoppers, excuse me, it's Unicorns and Beavers in Game 1 of the 2023 U.S. PBL Championship. We'll be back after this. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Fifth Third Bank. Yeah, it's a quirky name. But here's the thing. Five-thirds equals 166.7%. 
so we put 166.7% into everything we do. Like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early, giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees, and helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a fifth third better. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for health care. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups as they've been exchanged at home plate and they're being announced at Jimmy John's Field right now. We'll begin with the visiting and four seed Utica Unicorns at 17 and 26 on the year leading off and playing first base is Lucas Gooden. The second batter and the right fielder, Angel Diaz. Felix Abaret will be the designated hitter batting third. Josh Baker is the left fielder batting fourth. Ramon Enriquez is the catcher tonight. He has the duties behind the dish, and he will bat fifth. Jared Weber is at the hot corner defensively, batting sixth. Nick Pastor, an MVP candidate out in center field, will bat seventh. Patrick Baggett, one of the defensive player of the year candidates, is at short, batting eighth. And Donovan Curiel is on the right side of the infield, making up the double play combination up the middle with Baggett as he is the second baseman, batting ninth. And the pitcher of the year on the mound in the purple is Andrew Huffman. For the home, and three seeded 21 and 23 Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. Their 2023 MVP, Chris Davis, will lead things off and be out in the center field defensively. Rudy Ramirez is in the two hole in the lineup. He'll be the designated hitter off his feet today. Ray Hilbrick is out in right, batting third. On the other corner, it's Malik Bolin, an MVP candidate, batting fourth and out in left field. J.D. Stubbs, the developmental player of the year, is at first base, batting fifth. Christian Ortega on the other corner, the hot corner, batting sixth over at third base. Luke Stevenson has the duties behind the dish. He's the catcher, batting seventh. Marcus Judd and Ben Wilcoxon make the double play combination up the middle, the second baseman and the shortstop will bat eighth and ninth, respectively. And Greg Lokinen, the 2021 Pitcher of the Year, will throw in the U.S. PBL playoffs for the first time since that 2021 season. Lineups are pretty much done. Anthem is on its way. We'll step aside, and when we come back, we will have first pitch for you on the U.S. PBL Network.
Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for health care. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Slide into a Greg Lokanen against Andrew Huffman. Moments away, and with that, let's take a look at our Ascension pitcher comparison between the two. Lokanen joining the league a little bit later this year, obviously returning from last year after leaving halfway through. He joins about halfway through this year, a 3.86 ERA in 28 innings. Good strikeout to walk ratio, 35 to 11. Andrew Huffman on the other side, the pitcher of the year. This is as good as the numbers get. 254 in 49 and two thirds, 71 Ks, only 29 walks, 26 hits in those 49 and two thirds innings. We should see very good stuff on the mound tonight. Lokanen obviously pitching from the left side, Huffman from the right. Lokanen will face lefty Lucas Gooden. And then righties on Hel Diaz and Felix Aberrett here in the first inning as we're just about ready to get started with the 2023 playoffs. Still gray skies, overcast all day here in downtown Utica. There's some blue peeking through out of left field, which is usually a sign of what's to come as far as the weather goes here from Jimmy John's Field. The lights are on and we are ready to go. Lokanen, last time he started, that was a week ago, September 1st, as the calendar flipped against the Mammoths. That was in a walk-off loss, 7-6. to six. The Mammoths took that one. It was a good start for Greg, five innings, two runs, five hits, two walks, and five strikeouts. He's going to utilize the fastball knuckle-curve change-up mix, and that knuckle-curve is a hammer that has been so difficult for so many players to hit all season long. Gooden digs in from the left side. Lokanen lifts the leg. And we're underway in the 2023 playoffs at 7-14, ball one to Gooden. Gooden on the season, 269 average in 37 games. Has started. 36 of them. One one, swing and a miss. Fastball for Loken and sits mid to high 80s. That last one coming in at 87. And the one two. Tried to get him with the curve, and that is a big league take by Lucas Gooden. Triggered, but didn't offer. Nice job to stay alive. See another pitch. 2-2. On the ground, short stop. 
Fielded on the backhand by Wilcoxon. Throw to first. Nice play, Ben Wilcoxon. A defensive player of the year candidate. And you see why on the first out. 6-3 goes the put out. And one down here in the top of the first. Wilcoxon was at short. Let's take a look at the rest of the defense behind Lokanen. It's Bolin, Davis, and Hillbrick across the outfield left to right. Ortega's at third. You just saw Wilcoxon at short. Judd at second, Stubbs at first, and Luke Stevenson calling and catching the pitches. Angel Diaz, lefty righty, swing and a miss at a fastball outside, strike one. Diaz, another later ish addition, only up to 24 games now. Quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. Fastball change up from Loken in on the first two. And got him again. Change up outside. Three pitches and the first strikeout of the night for Loken in. Two up and two down. Now Felix Aberrett strides to the plate. Felix is a player who thrives in these playoffs. He's been in them once before already. That was last season. Hit three home runs in the championship game for these Beavers against his current team, the Unicorns. Much of the roster for both of those teams has changed from the last two seasons, especially on the Unicorn side of things. Swing and a miss at a fastball up, one and one. The Unicorns, in fact, don't have anybody on their roster that was here a season ago in their runner-up season. 1-1, one, one. inside and fouled away. Beavers have a couple guys. J.D. Stubbs was here. Chris Davis has a ring. Malik Bolin in left was on those unicorns and that runner up. Now looking to repeat with the Beavers. Two and two on the spike curveball. Always interesting talking to these teams, how they spent their off days as there's a young Stafford fan. Exciting day today for the Lions fans. About an hour away from starting the NFL season. Out of Arrowhead Stadium. Aberrett out to left. Malik Bolin's going to have to chase this one down as it goes all the way back to the wall. Felix digging for two. Bolin picks it up, throws it in. Aberrett slides in safely with a two-out double. We know Felix Aberrett can hit. We know he likes to do it in the big games. And he keeps this first inning alive for the Unicorns. Puts himself in scoring position with one of the best hitters in the purple and red, Josh Baker coming up. Baker hitting 236, leads the Unicorns with five home runs. Lefty, lefty matchup. First pitch fastball up and Josh takes. Baker struggled a little bit in the second half of the season, was primarily 270 and up with the average all year long. The OPS is still above league average at 737. And another fastball that just barely misses up. Two balls, no strikes, and he's in a good hitter's count. Everett off a second. Loken and delivers. Paints the corner. Going back to our last point, talking about what these teams, how they spend essentially the week off that they had. The Unicorns spent a lot of it looking at spin on the pitch machine. The 2 1. Little flutter slice to left. Aberrett's going to be waved around. That lands in no man's land. Bolin scoops it up. He will have no play at home. And the Unicorns are on the board first, thanks to Josh Baker with a two-out flare to left field to score Aberrett from second base. It's one nothing Unicorns. 
There's a fastball up, and Baker laid off of it for a long time, long enough to put it the opposite way over the head of third baseman Christian Ortega, who had no play. And it was so softly hit that Boland didn't have a chance to throw Aberrett out at home. Baker gets a single out of it. Ramon Enriquez at the plate. Inside, it gets away from Stevenson, and Baker down to second now. The reason this Unicorns team looked at a ton of spin on the pitch machine, that's what they saw mainly, sliders and curve balls all week leading up to this game is because of that knuckle curve that Greg Loken and throws so often off of that fastball. It's his second primary pitch. Enriquez swings and misses through the fastball. One and one. Loken and still likes to use the changeup that he has, but that curveball is definitely his second favorite pitch. And another fastball up that misses. So already 20 pitches for Greg. Out into center field. This could score Baker. Drops in front of Davis. He scoops it up. Baker gets the stop sign at third. And Loken in fields the throw that comes all the way in from Davis. Beavers not out of the woods yet. Runners on the corners with two outs now in the top of the first. Looked like this was going to be a quick inning for Loken in. He got Gooden to ground out on five pitches, then struck out Diaz on three. But since then, double, single, single. And the sixth batter Loken in will face is Jared Weber. Fastball up. Weber out of Crawfordville, Florida. Went to Florida A&M for five seasons. Just lifts one foul, one and one. Has played and started in 21 games since joining the league. OPS right around 600. Only seven RBIs, but number eight is 90 feet away. And that fastball. Loken and gets it down a little bit. That's been the miss early on. The fastball up. But he finds that one for a strike. One more away from getting out of this first inning with only one run across. The one, two, swing and a miss. Into the glove on the foul tip. Strike three. Loken and gets a pair of strikeouts, but coming up big with a two out single is Josh Baker to score Felix Aberretts and the Unicorns are on the board first in the playoffs. See what the Beavers can do in response on the other side of the first inning. But first, Carol Wolfbauer is standing by with our thrifty florist, sweetheart of the game. Hey, Johnny, I'm over here in section 101 for those of you who cannot find me today. But happy championship weekend. And the best way to start off championship weekend is with our sweetheart of the game. This is Miss Diane. Miss Diane, give the crowd a wave. There she is. So J.J. Arfield General, sponsored by Michigan First Credit Union, went sniffing all over the stands saying he found Miss Diane. He went by Thrifty Flores this morning, picked up a beautiful bouquet of flowers, and he just knew Diane was the perfect sweetheart. So one more wave, Diane. She's a huge Unicorns fan. So she says, go unicorns, right, Diane? Go unicorns. go unicorns. All right, let's send it back up to Johnny now. Thanks. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Now time for the 23-year-old native of Kerhunkson, New York, Andrew Huffman, to take the mound here against the Beavers with a early one-run lead. 71 strikeouts, good for almost 13 per nine innings, and that's a very good mark for a guy who, with one out, will reach his 50th inning completed this season. 
Opponents hitting 149. Those 71 strikeouts and a 149 opponent batting average are the best numbers of any Unicorns pitcher. It's a Unicorn staff that has really been decent all year long. A team ERA that is the highest in the league, but everyone is really close at a 444 for the Unicorns. It's been the offense that has been the main struggle for them all season long. The defense behind Andrew Huffman, as always, brought to you by Three Dimensional Services. Reeds Baker in left, Pastor in center, and Diaz out in right. Weber and Gooden are on the corners. Baggett and Curiel, as always, up the middle for the double play. And Ramon Enriquez calling and catching tonight. Unicorns pitchers, percentage-wise, walk fewer batters than any team in the league but conversely also last in strikeouts. Huffman will face Davis, Ramirez, and Hilbrick to start things off at the bottom of the first. We mentioned how important it was going to be for whichever offense could get on the board first, and the Unicorns did just that. Lokanen had a taxing first inning, 25 pitches plus, and a run across the board already. Three lefties in the lineup for the Beavers tonight. Davis, Hilbrick, and Stubbs. Huffman will face two of them in this first. The 2023 co-MVP takes a ball inside. One ball and no strikes on Davis. For Huffman. Five pitches, four-seam fastball, plus a two-seam. The off-speed is curveball slider splitter. And there's a hard fastball, 91, and a swing and a miss. Another fastball, bottom of the zone. Davis leans back, maybe not agreeing with the call. Chris has been very good in the leadoff spot. That's where he's been all year long. And when he leads off an inning, gets a hit over 50% of the time. The one, two, high and away. Nine seventy eight OPS for Davis. Tied for the team lead in home runs with seven, nearly 30 RBIs as well. And he works the count full. This is not a guy you want to let get on after scoring a run in the first inning. If you're Huffman, Davis can be treacherous on the base paths as well. Payoff pitch. And he walks him. That's something Davis has done more than anybody all season long. Walk number 38. And he's only struck out 37 times. There's been a lot that have been a walk kind of like that, too, where Davis falls behind in the count and forces the pitcher to throw a strike. Does not swing at those close pitches. He'll make you come squarely in the zone. And Huffman didn't want to do it. And the leadoff runner is on for the Beavers, trailing by a run. Ramirez takes a fastball up. Enriquez is definitely going to be aware of Davis over at first. Leads the team with 10 steals, caught four times. Two balls, no strikes. The Wayne State product, Rudy Ramirez, hitting 245 this year. Almost all of his games started in this role, the designated hitter. He's played a little bit of left. And now Huffman sends Davis back to the bag. Not sure we'll see Davis run in a situation like this. They might wait for another out or a non-fastball count. 
Ramirez probably sitting on a fastball here. Davis fakes like he's going to go. It is a fastball, but Ramirez swings right through it. Two one in there for a strike. Perfect pitch on the outside edge. Ramirez not happy with the call. Now has to battle with two strikes. Would love to advance Davison's scoring position somehow. And Chris steps back to the bag again. Early trouble for Huffman. One on, nobody out. 2-2, two, two, fouled back. Andrew has been really, and I mean really good, against the Beavers this season. His last two starts, both seven or more innings, with a combined four hits. Nearly a back pick from Enriquez, but Davis saw it all the way. Three and two now. In six outings total this year, some in relief, some as starts for Huffman. He's only given up two earned runs to the Beavers. Payoff pitch again. Davis fakes like he's going to go. It's ball four anyways. And back-to-back -back walks to start this game for Huffman. Batting champion at 340 in 30 games, Ray Hilbrick now from the left side. First pitch fastball squarely in for a strike. Those two runs that Huffman gave up came his last time out against the Beavers. It was back on August 31st, just over a week ago. Hilbrick skies this one to the left side. Going back is Weber. Bag it as well. Weber long run, but he'll make the grab. Davis fakes like he's going to tag from second base, but it was covered well by Andrew Huffman. And a big first out pop out for Huffman to get one of the best hitters in the Beavers lineup. Doesn't get easier with the next guy at the plate, Malik Bolin, tied for the team lead with seven home runs. The only two runs that Huffman has given up against the Beavers this season came on a seventh inning two-run home run in that last start. He had gone six scoreless before that. Boland swings the first pitch fastball, tipped in a strike. May look in his second season in the league. The numbers don't support it, but he has improved at the plate and in the field. Backs out of the high fastball. 271 average at UC. You mentioned the seven home runs. Also has 27 RBIs. And another high fastball. That just clipped him. I think it caught him right on the earpiece of the helmet. Even Ramirez and Davis weren't quite sure that it hit him. And he's awarded first base, so the base is loaded with one out for J.D. Stubbs. Not an easy first inning for either of these pitchers. But Huffman's going to have to shoulder this load and try to get out of this jam.
First pitch swinging to Stubbs. This is second double play ball. Curiel to bag it for one. Throw back to first, and it gets away. Davis scores. Here comes Ramirez. He will score. And the Beavers have taken the lead 2-1 to one here in the first. Baggett, who has been a plus and sound defender all season long at shortstop, a defensive player of the year candidate, and rightfully so, just tried to go too fast on what would have been an inning ending double play, and instead it scores two, and the Beavers have the lead. Davis and Ramirez, the two that score, Bolin was out on his way to second via the force out. One ball, no strikes on the third baseman, Christian Ortega, who's got a chance to add to the lead with Stubbs in scoring position as he advanced to second on the throw. This one's to third. One hop for Gooden right to the chest. Fires a stripe over to first, and they're out of the inning. Some early run scoring between these two teams. Beavers do it on no hits. A couple of walks and a wild throw bring in two. They take the lead two to one as we head to the second here on the US PBL Network. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. With a transforming world, we can see how drastically the world is heading towards automation. And so we need 24-7 surveillance and security systems for our homes and businesses to avoid any theft or breach of privacy. Jarbcom brings the installation of security cameras to the tip of your fingers with our state-of-the-art mobile app. Jarbcom also provides surveillance monitoring of your entire property with flexible options that offer a dependable solution to be scaled to fit any domestic or commercial need. Contact Jarbcom today for a free estimate at 800-369-0374 or look us up on the web at jarbcom.com. We can be sure that Greg Lokanen is not happy with himself giving up a run in the first inning, but has to feel good about coming out for the second with a one-run lead. Walk, walk, pop out, hit batter, and then a fielder's choice and a throwing error. Give the Beavers a two-to-one lead here to start the second inning. Unicorns sent six batters to the plate in the top of the first. Three of them got hits. Those were Aberett, Baker, and Enriquez, all with two outs. Baker scored, or excuse me, he brought around Aberett to score. So seven, eight, and nine, Pastor, Baggett, and Curiel do up. Lefty switch, righty. Baggett will bat from the right side once he gets up, which he doesn't get to do too often against a lefty. But first, it'll be MVP candidate Nick Pastor. First pitch, curveball missing outside. Pastor batting 274. That curveball placed well on the inside part of the plate. One and one. Fastball, swing and a miss, busted him inside. Loken in ahead in the count. Working quickly, trying to get back into a groove after 25 pitches in that first inning. And that one might have hit him had he not swung, but it's just barely nubbed foul. And another foul ball. Lokanen was good the last time he faced the Unicorns. 
That was all the way back on August 5th in that 19-3 win that we mentioned for the Beavers during the pregame show. Strike three called. Fastball outside. Lokanen paints it perfectly and sends Pastor down his third K of the night already. Lokanen in that game on August 5th. Five innings, five hits, no runs. Struck out six and only walked one. Through seven batters, he's got three strikeouts, and he's ahead 0-1 to bag it. Bag it only 19 at-bats against lefties this year. Over 110 against righties. He has hit better from the right side, but that's with the significantly reduced sample size. And he's behind 0-2. Swing and tipped into the glove. Strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lokanen here in the top of the second. And that's three straight now going back to the first. Just mentioned that he had six strikeouts in that start on August 5th. He's already got four in this one. The second baseman, Curiel, digs in the first pitch. Swing and a miss. Dicing up the bottom of the order right now is located in the second. We've seen him do this often, get better as the starts go on. There's a curveball that dips in with late break, 0-2. Curiel calls his timeout. Now the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Greg Loken in slicing up the Unicorns' bottom of the order in the second. Strikeout swinging, strikeout looking, strikeout swinging to keep this game at 2-1. to one. We'll head to the Beavers' half of the second when we come back after this on the U.S. PBL Network. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. the financial champion of Michiganders. Whether you're a goal getter or dream chaser, an empty nester or up and comer, anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Time for the bottom of the second and when it's time for baseball, it's time for beer. Two-Hearted Ale has been named the number one beer in America for the past four years by members of the American Homebrewers Association. Play ball with the best. Two-Hearted Ale, the iconic American IPA from Bell's Brewery in Comstock, Michigan. Please drink responsibly. Well, how about Greg Loken in last inning? Three straight strikeouts after giving up three two-out hits the inning before. Talk about a turnaround. Keeps this game right where it is, two to one in favor of the Beavers. Huffman didn't give up a hit in that first inning, but two runs come across on the throwing error from Patrick Baggett after a pair of leadoff walks. Seven, eight, nine, Stevenson, Judd, and Wilcoxon do up as Stevenson takes a ball high.
Swing and a miss, one and one. Stevenson won 33 on the season in 26 games. Has traded starts with the other catcher for the Beavers, Alex Crump. Perfect pitch from Huffman to get ahead, one and two. Does have three home runs. Double digit walks for a first year player in the league is always good, especially at the catcher position. Thought about swinging at the fastball up. Best one that we've seen tonight from Huffman, 93. But it misses two and two. He did not go on the appeal to first. Fastball misses again at 92. Close take from Stevenson. Huffman might have thought he had strike three, but instead it's ball three. Full count. And he spiked it. Pulled the fastball in the third walk of the day for Andrew Huffman. The walks have always been maybe a little bit higher than you would probably like from your starting pitcher. And again, Huffman's done a little bit of both, a little bit of relief, a little bit of starting, but just over five per nine. But you couple that with nearly 13 strikeouts and it's forgivable. Still looking for his first K tonight as that one gets away from Enriquez and down to second goes Stevenson. And has just not been clean through the first eight batters for Huffman at all. Another leadoff man gets in scoring position with no outs. Judge shows bunt, drops it down perfectly down the first base side, and a miscommunication between the pitcher and catcher, Huffman and Enriquez. Everybody's safe. Beautifully placed bunt. We hardly see bunting all season long. And how about Marcus Judd getting a single out of it, moving the runner over to third. Beavers can add to their lead off the bat of Ben Wilcoxon. Judd going on the pitch, throw down to second to the right side, and it gets away. A run's going to score. Judd rounds all the way to third. He'll get the stop sign there. Enriquez pushed the throw to the first base side. Baggett couldn't collect it as he tried to avoid the runner Judd. Stevenson scores on the wild throw. Beavers now lead it three to one. Sloppy defense in the first two innings for these unicorns. Enriquez and Huffman need to talk it over. So a stolen base for Judd advances on the error. Stevenson scores on the E2. The pitch was outside to Wilcoxon, so 1-0. and oh. Now with the infield drawn in, nobody out. In the dirt, and Enriquez just barely blocked it, hit both feet before it died in the dirt behind him. And some playoff jitters, it seems like, for Huffman. Beavers have been the most aggressive team on the bases all season long, and it's paying off here in the second. 2-0. Missed again with the slider. 62 steals, far and away the most of any team in the league. That's what the Beavers have this year. 62 for 69, only caught seven times. 3-0, Wilcoxon taking all the way. Fastball, middle, middle. 
force Huffman to throw two strikes, likely. Fastball lifted to center. Backing up past Doerr, he's camped under it. Judd likely going to tag, he does. The throw is up the third base side. It's not in time, Judd scores safely. It's 4-1 Beavers. Fired up and rightfully so. Wilcoxon gets the job done. A productive first out and on the sack fly, Beavers put four on the board, two of them in this inning. So Judd, pretty impressive trip around the bases. Reaches first on the bunt, takes second on the steal, third on the error, and goes home on the sack fly. Lineup turns over to Davis, waiting on the 1-0. Outside, two balls and no strikes, and Andrew Huffman, who typically has more command than we're seeing tonight, Seems to be shaky a little bit. Fastball. Strike one. It's been a good fastball tonight. Has life, rises through the zone. And Huffman is not getting hit either has yet to give up a true hit. The only hit he's given up is the bunt to Judd. Three of the four runs that have scored reached on a walk. 2-2. Two -two. And in the dirt. One of those walks that scored was Davis last inning. Same situation. Worked the count full. Got Huffman to walk the leadoff man. Still looking for his first strikeout. He shakes off Enriquez a couple of times, and now he'll step back and call for a conversation with his catcher. Not sure that they're on the same page. And that was a pitch clock violation. So Davis gets sent down to first. Huffman pleading that he called time before the pitch clock reached zero. And this is just all going wrong for the Unicorns in the first game of the playoffs. So Davis awarded ball four on the pitch clock violation. It's the fourth statistical walk of the night for Huffman, only three true ones. There's the clock out in center. Just left of the batter's eye. Ramirez also walked his first time. Takes ball one. Up and in, one and one the count. Huffman works the first base side of the rubber. Has to be aware of the runner Davis again. The one one. Swing and a miss with the slider. The one two. Fastball got him inside. Strike three called, and that's the first strikeout of the night for Andrew Huffman. It comes 11 batters into this game. A guy who strikes out 13 per nine innings, and that's a big second out. That could help get them one step closer to stopping the bleeding here in the bottom of the second. And a move back to first from Huffman. Hilbrick, one of the only Beavers that didn't reach already in this game. He popped out on two pitches for the first out of the first inning. Davis with a bigger primary lead after the throwback. Hilbrick checked his swing. Did not go. One ball, no strikes. 
Hilbrick hitting two, excuse me, 340 this season. You saw him in the pregame show, crowned the batting champion of the USPBL. That one's low. Already five three ball counts for Huffman tonight. He's at risk of reaching number six right here. 44 pitches. Checks the runner, now sets. Love at the belt. Fires in this one's broke to right field. Davis will stop at second, a two out single for Ray Hilbrick. Can't expect the batting champion to get out too many times, and he doesn't with two outs here. Bolin was hit by the pitch last time he was up. Dangerous situation here. Huffman needs a third out. Hillbrick and Davis, the runners. First pitch blocked by Enriquez. No relief from the bullpen. Should expect Huffman to still try to get another one, maybe two more innings. If he can turn it around, he could go deeper. Fastball strike. The fastball still looks good. When he puts it in the zone, it's nearly perfect. One inside, Bullock gets out of the way. Has to be a little aware of that pitch inside as he got hit the first time up. Two and one. Slider outside. Ooh, caught the corner. Strike two. Bullock didn't like it. Davis at second, Hilbrick at first. Two on, two out. Two, two of the count. Swing and a miss, Andrew Huffman. Two big strikeouts to get out of this second inning. Has to feel a little bit better walking off the mound, but it's 4-1 Beavers on just one hit and a hit that didn't produce any runs. Two outs, single from Ray Hilbrick. We'll head to the third on the USPBL Network. The Dave and Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and recenter life around zapping stuff and cheering for stuff with your friends. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. Fifth Third Extra Time helps you do you better. So kick back and relax. You have extra time to avoid overdraft fees. Fifth Third Extra Time. This is banking a fifth third better. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Some playoff cup pong at Jimmy John's Field as we're just about ready to start the third inning. It'll be the top of the order due up Gooden, Diaz, and Aberrett for the Unicorns. And Greg Lokanen, who sat for a long time in the bottom half of the second while his offense put up two more runs of support for him, goes back out. 
37 pitches so far. And if he picks up anywhere near where he left off in the top of the second, that is good news for the Beavers. Loken and striking out the side in the second. Also struck out the last batter of the first, so that's four straight. Gooden getting out of the way of a high fastball. First time Gooden faced Loken was a ground out to short. The 1 0. Curveball. Beautiful. Loken in so good at locating that curveball. Has such a good feel for it. A lot of times, if you see him miss, he'll just come right back with it. Doesn't put it where he wants in the first pitch. He'll come back the second time and spot it up perfectly. Ahead one and two here, working quickly on Gooden. Curveball, got him, strike three. What a pitch from Greg Lokinen. Lefty on lefty, looked like it was going to hit Gooden. Halfway there, took a right turn towards the plate, finds the strike zone, and five straight strikeouts for Lokinen tonight. It's number six total. Justin Karn, the assistant manager for the Mammoths, Talked about the former Mammoth pregame today. Kind of with a, a smile on his face said, this guy pitches well in big games. You know Lokanen can always go out there and give you a gem. Chris Davis talked about that as well with his pitcher on the mound. Out to left, bowling in, and now back a couple steps. Probably didn't have to move at all in the end as Diaz flies out. That ends the strikeout streak at five straight. Two down, now Averett comes to the plate. Hit a two-out double last time. Eventually came around to score after three straight two-out hits in the first. First pitch, fastball missing high. Speaking of Justin Karn and the Karn family, we have some congratulations in order. Lauren Karn, Justin's wife, the former head softball coach at nearby Oakland University, just this week announced she accepted the head softball coaching position at Maryland over on the East Coast, moving up from the Horizon League to the Big Ten. Karn said he and his wife and the kids went out there for the press conference earlier in the week. It's been a hectic but exciting time for them as they're getting ready to make their transition back towards home. He's from the New York area. She's from outside Philadelphia. So over on the East Coast now, near Washington, D.C., Maryland. Two and one and chopped foul. Lauren spent six seasons at Oakland before accepting the job with Maryland. Justin, of course, was the head coach at nearby Madonna University. Not too far from here in Livonia. 2-2. Two -two. Nearly backdoored the curveball again, did Loken, and Aberrett took it the whole way, and it's a full count. Two USPBL vets battling here. Two down. The payoff pitch. Curveball misses. Oh, he called him strike three. Aberrett gets yanked back to the dugout. He was halfway to first. Curveball back door. Got him looking. Strikeout number seven. And that's the fifth third out of this game. 
The fifth third out, as always, brought to you by Fifth Third Bank here on the US PBL Network. Greg Lokanen has struck out six of the past seven batters. It's 4-1 Beavers as we get ready for the bottom of the third, but not before everyone's favorite, JJ, goes out to shallow right field and delivers some water on a little bit humid Thursday night here in downtown Utica to our field umpire. And duly compensated with the treat himself. JJ, the field general at Jimmy John's Field. Now, Kara Wolfbauer has got the DTE kid race, the mascot. He says hello. So he's going to be racing the mascot today, thanks to DTE sponsoring our DTE Kid Race the Mascot. We got boats over there on second base. He's had a tough season so far, but it's championship weekend. You never know what's going to happen. So George Starr here, he was a back kid today, so he's obviously the star of the show. I'm going to count you guys down. Ready? Three, two, one, go! All right, and George takes off number 23 today. Like I said, he was a back kid, so he's kind of a hot commodity here at Jimmy John's Field. All right, Buzz is making his way to third base. George is rounding. Give him a big round of applause as he heads on home. Come on, George. There we go. George is our winner today. Great job, man. Sorry, Buzz. Better luck next time. We'll send it back up to Johnny now. Way to go, George. Wearing the 23 jersey. Is it for Jordan? Could be. 4-1 Beavers as we get ready for the bottom of the third. Andrew Huffman still out there, and it has been a messy first two innings. Four walks total. One of them was a walk and a full count due to a pitch clock violation. Did get his first strikeout and first two strikeouts to end last inning. He's only given up one hit, excuse me, two hits, one real hit. The other one was a bunt from Marcus Judd. But a hit batter. An error, a sack fly, it's been a little bit of everything for Huffman, and now the bullpen starts to get moving a little bit for the Unicorns. It's Jace Bauman getting loose over there. Stubbs, Ortega, Stevenson, five, six, and seven due up. Huffman over the half century mark with this pitch. Fastball that Stubbs just jackknifes out of the way of. J.D. bounced into that fielder's choice into a throwing error from Baggett that scored two runs. He gets credited for one RBI with that and lifts this one high to the catcher Enriquez. Good and also in the area, and it will be Ramon Enriquez recording the first out. Christian Ortega swinging a very good bat. Really ever since he got to the league, only 20 games and five home runs already. Nearly 20 RBIs, an 858 OPS for the 23-year-old Miami Florida native. Takes the first pitch fastball on the outside for a strike. The 01 outside slider. We haven't seen too much of the secondary pitches for Huffman. We've seen both fastballs, the four and two seams. Curveball slider splitter are the other pitches. And it's just been a little bit too little of command for him to rely on those. Just like that there. Slider outside was never really a strike. one fastball up and Ortega just a bit late as he follows it directly behind home plate and over the seats swing and a miss got him with the curveball Enriquez will have to throw down to first and does safely for the second out. The 
Now Stevenson's turn. Luke walked and scored last inning. Fastball in for a strike. Stevenson, a native of the Mitten State. Algonac over on the western side. Sorry, eastern side. This one's right back up the middle. Baggett ranging over to his left. Makes a nice play. Looked like that could have been a single to center, but Patrick Baggett so smooth at short. And finally, for Andrew Huffman, a much-needed one, two, three inning. Pop out, strike out, ground out, and he is out of the third. See if his offense can give him some support in the fourth when we come back on the U.S. PBL Network. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Josh Baker swings and misses at the first pitch, strike one. As we're back for the top of the four. Thank you so much for joining us on YouTube, Facebook, My Michigan TV, wherever you're watching from. 2023 playoffs, first game. Winner of this will go on to face the two seated hoppers tomorrow at 7.05. Two Baker just caught a piece of the fastball up and away. Four one Beavers here in the fourth. Greg Lokanen gave up three two out hits and a run in the first inning, and since then he's sent down the next seven straight batters, six on strikeouts, and in a good position to get number seven here. And Baker just catches a piece. Talked about how good Lokanen is in big games. The only other time he pitched in the USPBL playoffs was back on September 10th, 2021 against the Beavers as a Mammoth. And that's pounded foul. Three straight, two strike fouls from Baker. Came in in relief for the Mammoths in that game. Pitched two innings, only gave up one hit, but did allow two runs. Struck out four with no walks, though. Very similar numbers to what we're seeing today. Yet to walk anybody. 0-2 again. 
Swing and a miss. Got him this time. Went back to the fastball for the fourth straight time. And that's seven strikeouts in the last eight. You know Lokanen is feeling it too because it's a good mix of both swinging and looking. Three looking strikeouts and five swinging tonight. Now the first pitch to Enriquez. Catcher gets out of the way of a curveball. The 1-0. Like we talked about earlier, if Lokanen misses that curveball, very likely to go right back to it and spot it perfectly. Does so right there, bottom of the strike zone. Not much Enriquez can do with that one from the right side, and it's strike one. Now goes to the fastball, but it misses. That curveball catches it. Sorry, fastball from Lokanen, actually. With some movement. And Enriquez will step out and call time with two strikes. Did so just barely in time. Nine seconds on the pitch clock. Batter has to be ready by eight. Pitcher has to make his move towards home plate before zero. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and fouled. Right back to the banister. <laughs> One run on three hits with a couple of errors for the Unicorns. Four runs on two hits and no errors for the Beavers. Swing and a miss in the dirt. Stevenson scoops it up with the right hand, throws down to first, and back-to-back -back strikeouts again for Lokanen. Going back to the third, that's three straight. So we already had one strikeout streak of five in a row ended. And after that, he resumes with three straight and number nine. Unbelievable performance from Loken in tonight. 62 pitches here with two down in the top of the fourth. And perhaps the only downside for the Beavers is this arm won't be available should they win and make it to tomorrow against the Hoppers. That's in the back of both of these managers' minds right now. <laughs> Lifted right side, Judd. Over to his left, back a little bit, fighting the lights, and it drops. I don't think that caught his glove, so that'll be a hit for Jared Weber. The highest hit of the season, maybe, and a two-out base runner. We've talked about it a little bit this year. Those pop flies often look routine. They're classified that way, but they're really not for some of these fielders. Once that ball gets above where the lights are, disappears into the dark blue Utica night sky. And I think that's just what happened to Judd. So Weber over at first with two outs. There you see the lights. High enough to light the field, but not substantially high. A number of Fly balls can get above them, as that last one did. One zero in the lefty lefty matchup against the center fielder Pastor. Runner goes, throw down to second from Stevenson. It's a good one, but not in time. Weber with a steal. Number four for him this season. Only caught once. Now in scoring position, pitch missed as well. So two and zero.
Looks like there might be an equipment malfunction. Something gets stuck in Weber's lace. Maybe it looks like his lace might have came off his shoe and he had to retie it quickly over there at second. Maybe he got stepped on and yanked off. Nonetheless, he's in scoring position with two outs. Unicorns have already utilized some two out hitting in this game. They need it again here, trailing four to run. Pastor takes a ball outside. Three balls and no strikes. Nick, another guy who can work a good at bat. 17 walks, 30 strikeouts this year. In 41 games for the center fielder. MVP candidate. The 3 0. Fastball finds it for a strike. <laughs> Weber off a second. Wilcoxon holding him on. Now works back to short. And Pastor thought it was ball four. Instead, it's a full count. Lokanen sets with the glove up by the left shoulder. Lowers it, checks the runner. Lifts the leg and delivers. Back up the middle, tried to backhand it. Now Judd will charge, throw to first. Pastor's got speed, but Judd is faster. A big two-out ground out. Nice play by Marcus Judd. Not easy to get Pastor, who gets down the line quickly. And Lokanen strands the runner at second. It's still 4-1. to one. Beavers leading when we come back. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great time at Jimmy John's Field experiencing another exciting baseball game. This ballpark is one of many quality of life recreational assets Macomb County has to offer. And as you leave here today, let me invite you to explore Macomb County's diverse range of outdoor assets by visiting makemacombyourhome.com. You'll find the Macomb County's trails are open year long and available for walking, running, biking, as well as paddling along the Clinton River. In Macomb County, there is something for everyone. Find out more about Macomb County's Four Seasons of Fun by visiting MakeMacombYourHome.com. Now let's play ball. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Andrew Huffman finally got a 1-2-3 inning back in the bottom of the third. Pop out, strike out, ground out. So he's still out there for the fourth. Chase Bauman is getting ready in the bullpen for the Unicorns should things go awry in this fourth inning. Judd, Wilcoxon, and Davis, 8-9-1, and one, due up for the Beavers. And there you see Bauman in the pen. Judd reached on a bunt single in the second. Fouls the first pitch back. Reached first on a bunt, stole second, reached third on an error, a throwing error on the steal, and then scored on a sack fly. All the way around the bases without really having to do much. Calls timeout here. The 
the 0 1. Curveball strike two. Judd on the season 183. Fantastic defense at second base. Fastball way outside. One of the most fun people to talk to was a candidate for the Sportsmanship Award, and rightfully so. Very smart baseball mind. A one, two. Swing and a miss. Got him with the fastball up. Huffman records strikeout number four to start the fourth. First out as Ben Wilcoxon comes to the plate. Wilcoxon in the nine hole, not your typical nine hole hitter. 271 average this year, an OPS above 800. First pitch out to left, pretty well struck into the gap. Ranging over is Baker, now crosses, both slide and it drops. Baker and Pastor, neither could get there. Pastor gets up and throws it in quickly. And Ben Wilcoxon with a double here in the fourth. It was squarely into the gap in left center field, almost perfectly splitting the left fielder Baker and the center fielder Pastor. And remember, that ground is still a little wet out there from the rain that we had about two hours before first pitch tonight. Neither fielder probably able to get a great jump. Now Davis lifts one to the left side. Baker with a long run. This is in foul territory. Doesn't get out of play, but not anywhere where anyone can get to it. Davis, two walks tonight. Still yet to get an actual at bat on the scorecard. The 0 1 takes a fastball up. Part of the reason he's had a team best batting average of 323 team best behind Ray Hilbrick at 340 is because of his eye waits for his pitch and usually does damage on them this one's back up the middle freezing on the line drive it goes off the glove of Baggett Wilcoxon was in front of him Pastor up with the throw as Wilcoxon is waved around not in time he's safe Chris Davis with an RBI double Beavers extend their lead 5-1 Jim Essien staying in the dugout. Andrew Huffman likely going to try to finish this fourth inning. So still one on and one out for Rudy Ramirez, who takes a curveball strike. Ramirez a walk and a strikeout tonight. Curiel holding Davis on at second. Nice pick by Enriquez behind the plate. That would have sent Davis easily to third had it gotten by him. A 1-1. One, one. Hard hit into left field, racing over his Baker. It's over his head. Hits off the warning track in the bottom of the wall. Davis getting the stop sign at third. He's going to go right through it. The throw to the plate in time, but it gets away. Ramirez over to third. He's going to take a big wide turn and stop there. Chris Davis scores running through the stop sign of manager Diesel Dombrowski, and it pays off as it's 6-1 Beavers here in the fourth. Davis with a feet first slide. Came in right at the line of the throw from Baker and left. 
Not much Enriquez could do to try to field it. It beat him to the plate, but skipped by on one hop. And Jim Messian is going to come out and likely take the baseball from Andrew Huffman. He will do so, and as the Unicorns go to the bullpen, trailing 6-1 to one with their season on the line, we'll step aside a pitching change here on the USPBL Network. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union, visit us today. It is not Chase Bauman out of the bullpen. Tristan Harvin got a haircut. Deceptive all the way out there from the pen and right field as he comes to the mound to take over for Andrew Huffman in a tough spot. A one out jam with a runner on third. It's Rudy Ramirez after his double. He advanced to third on the throw from Baker that went home and was unable to get Chris Davis who slid in safely. So the 25 year old Dothan Alabama native will take over. Harvin has been a starter all year long, and this is not atypical to see in the playoffs here in the league. Starters coming out of the bullpen. Essentially, you're just going to use your best arms, and Harvin is one of them. Leads all Unicorns pitchers in innings this year with 64. Less than three walks per nine innings and more than six strikeouts per nine. Right, he has a 4-3-6 ERA this season. He'll face Ray Hilbrick to start. Hilbrick already with a single tonight. Came with two outs back in the second. Infield drawn in with only one out and the runner at third. Hilbrick gets out of the way of the first pitch. Harvin, fastball, splitter, curveball. That last one, the splitter at 78 for ball one. Strike called on the fastball. Harvin, this is just his second appearance in relief. 16 starts this year. Very good through the middle stages of the season for the Unicorns. Has a double digit strikeouts game this year. A couple times he's gone seven plus innings. Part of the reason he leads the Unicorns in innings this year. Much better against righties than lefties. Obviously, Hilbert batting from the left side. Lefties hit Harvin at 369 this year. The righty delivers the one two. Outside, two and two with the splitter. The 2 2. Swing and a miss. Right on top of the splitter. That's exactly what it's meant to do. Dips under the barrel. And the second strikeout, or the second out of the inning, the first strikeout for Harvin. Now 
Bolin takes a fastball for a strike. Malik batting for the third time tonight. Hit by pitch and a strikeout so far. The 0 1. Outside gets away. Here comes Ramirez. Slides in safely. A wild pitch scores another run. It's 7 1. It's happened a few times in the league this year. Too many wild pitches with runners in scoring position, particularly at third. Now the 1-1 one -one to Bolin. Swing and a miss right through the fastball. At bat changes a lot for Malik with that runner off a of third. Well high. Harvin a little susceptible to the long ball. Four home runs on the season. More of a pitch to contact guy. Not going to strike out too many. Wind hasn't been too much of a factor tonight. And it's just breezy and left. The center field American flag is limp. Still yet to see a home run despite eight runs on the board in total tonight. The payoff pitch to Bolin. Outside, he walked him. They look Bolin a good battle in that at bat. Fell behind one and two. And works a two out walk as now J.D. Stubbs will come up. And that's dangerous for the Unicorns because he is a lefty. Not only do lefties hit the unicorns a lot this year, but Stubbs way better against right-handed pitching than he is the other side. Catches the inside part of the plate with the fastball, one and one. Bowling at first, not a big base dealing threat, only one this year in just one attempt. Now Bowling goes and it's fouled away. Maybe the hit and run on there. He got a great jump off of Harvin too. I think if Stubbs didn't swing, he might have been safe. Announcer's jinx almost came true. Harvin, first base side of the rubber, plants the foot, delivers. How did J.D. Stubbs get out of the way of that pitch? Fastball at 86. You can see the frustration on his face. Just barely avoided that one. Thought it might have clipped some of the jersey, and if it did, he should have gone down to first. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Splitter got him right on top of it. Two strikeouts in the inning for Harvin. The only damage that's done after he comes on is Rudy Ramirez, who scores on a wild pitch from third. Beavers put up three in the fourth. Crooked numbers in three of the four innings so far for them. They lead it to seven to one as we move on to the fifth. Over here in right field might be a little hard to see me, but we've got a hamster ball race today. I have Max, I have James, they're over there by our soprano sign, and they're gonna be racing all the way to me to find out who the winner is today. All right, you boys ready? Three, two, one, go! All right, and they take off. All right, they're passing our Scott sign. Let me hear you guys cheer for them. There we go. 
Max is only seven years old, James is nine. So it's a bit of a tight race here today. Looks like James is making some headway. All right, boys, you're in the last lap. You're right there. You're headed home. All right, keep pushing, keep pushing. Max is giving a little bit of a wave to the crowd. I'm waiting here for a high five, James. Come on, man. In three, two, one. James is our winner today, but give Max and James both a big round of applause. Thanks, guys. We'll send it back up to Johnny now. The Dave and Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and reset our life around zapping stuff and cheering for stuff with your friends. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast, and so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. First pitch curveball to Patrick Baggett is strike one. It comes out of the hand of Greg Lokanen, who goes out to start the fifth inning. It's been four fantastic innings for Lokanen so far. 0-1, fastball missing high and away. Nine strikeouts, one run on three hits, and no walks so far for Lokanen. Here's the 1-1. One -one. The Dave and Buster's method. Just missing with the fastball. Baggett, one of those strikeout victims his first time up. That was back in the second inning. Lokanen has breezed through the order one and a half times, trying to get through these eight and nine hitters to complete two straight. A little bit of trouble against Baggett as three straight fastballs have missed. Now the three and one, swing and a miss. Fastball in the heart of the zone, a little bit of tailing action away from the switch hitter Baggett batting right. Fills up the count three and two. Foul ball. We mentioned Baggett's splits on the right and left side earlier. A little bit better from the right, but a much smaller sample size. In total, hitting 221 on the season. This one's to third. Just up enough for Ortega. Might have broken the bat as Lokanen get in on the handle with the fastball. And that's the first out. The nine-hole hitter Donovan Curiel will now come to home plate. First pitch curveball, not quite clipping the back door. Fastball curveball mix has been the bread and butter for Loken in all season, but especially tonight. Goes back to the curveball and Curiel smacked it foul. Again, the winner of this takes on the Hoppers tomorrow. 7.05 right here from Jimmy John's Field. You can catch it on the US PBL Network. There's a fastball swing and a miss. Looks like the Beavers right now in history of this season says it will stay this way. The Unicorns have really struggled offensively and their ability to come back in some of these games. As Curiel puts it out in the air to center, Davis long run right in front of his shortstop slides down after he puts it in the leather for the second out. Two down as the lineup flips over to Lucas Gooden, mentioning the Unicorns' struggles to kind of fight their way back in games this year. They did do so, however, 
last Saturday in game two of a doubleheader against the Hoppers. Trailed five to four going into the sixth. Put up a couple runs in that sixth inning. Good in a ground out and a strikeout tonight. A very open stance from the left side against the lefty Lokanen. Curveball. And that's just too easy for Greg Lokanen. Loves to use that curveball on the front door to the lefties for so long. Looks like it might hit him and zips its way back into the zone. On the 1-1. One -one. Curveball again, golfed out into center field. This one will drop in front of Davis, and Lucas Gooden wins that battle with Lokanen. Takes a 1-1 pitch and just lifts it to center field for a two-out knock. Now Angel Diaz will come up. That's just the fourth hit Lokanen has given up tonight. Check that fifth one. Fastball strike. Really seems like that first inning for Loken and might have just been a fluke. I mean, he got through Gooden and Diaz, the first two batters, to lead off this game pretty easily. But then Aberrett had a double. Back-to-back -back singles from Baker and Enriquez put that lone run on the board for the Unicorns. And since then, Loken has scattered two hits with eight strikeouts. Nasty curveball strike two. He's gone the last five batters without recording a strikeout. And at the rate, he's struck him out tonight. That's unusual. The longest stretch without a K for Lokanen so far. Looking to end it here ahead, one and two. Check swing. Did he go around? He did. Double digit Ks for Lokanen. Strikeout number 10 ends the fifth inning. And the Beavers still lead it seven to one. We'll be back after this in the U.S. PBL Network. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast. And so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Fifth Third Bank. Yeah, it's a quirky name. But here's the thing. Five-thirds equals 166.7%. So we put 166.7% into everything we do. Like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early. Giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees. And helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a Fifth Third better. The Dave & Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and recenter life around zapping stuff and cheering for stuff with your friends. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. If this is a top two country song all time and it's not number two. Oh, you know it won't be on me. Please <laughs> <send> me <laughs> recording this. <laughs> In case you can't tell, we like to have fun here on the U.S. PBL Network. The only way to test your mic truly is to sing, right? Especially Carrie Underwood before he cheats. It's a top two country song all time, and I'll tell you what, it's not number two. On a serious note, we're back here in the bottom of the fifth. It's 7-1, to one, Beavers leading the Unicorns, looking to live to fight another day here in the U.S. PBL's 2023 season the seventh season of the Independent League here in Utica, Michigan. Beavers, should this hold, will face the Hoppers tomorrow. Batting in the fifth, Christian Ortega, Luke Stevenson, and Marcus Judd, the six, seven, and eight hitters as Ortega pounds the, per the first pitch foul.
Ortega, a ground out and a strikeout tonight. One of the only Beavers to not get in on the fun. In fact, he's the only Beaver tonight who hasn't reached base in some capacity. This is his first time facing Harvin, who came on with one out in the fourth in relief of Huffman. Ortega lifts this one to the right side, hooking foul, and it will get to the umbrella seats over there in right field. Huffman, not the best day for him. Finished three and a third innings, seven hits, six runs, five of them earned, and four walks and strikeouts each for the pitcher of the year here in the U.S. PBL. Not sure what that does to your psyche as a pitcher, winning that award while you're warming up in the bullpen just before a playoff game. Back up the middle, outside of the glove of Harvin, but Curiel gets behind it and throws over to first. Four three, the put out. Ortega's out. Stevenson will come up. But I imagine that's got to be a little awkward, and maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's not. But the 2023 regular season awards were announced before first pitch tonight, and Andrew Huffman was obviously in the middle of his routine in the bullpen warming up before throwing out the first pitch, and they announced that he was the pitcher of the year with his 2.54 ERA in 49 and two-thirds innings. Just something to think about when looking at his final box score from tonight. Stevenson hard hit into left, and it will get over the head of third baseman Weber. Luke Stevenson reaches for the second time tonight, his first hit. One on and one out for Marcus Judd. Judd, a bunt single and a strikeout tonight. Takes a fastball up for ball one. Stevenson off of first, not a base stealing threat. 0 for 1 stealing this season. That gets away a little bit from Harvin. Two balls, no strikes. More action in the bullpen for the Unicorns. That's actually Jace Bauman. Saw the number 12 there. So he should be next. See how long Harvin goes. Judd lifts this one to center. Pastor getting behind it, gliding to his left. And two down. Harvin obviously has the capabilities to go deep. We mentioned him, a starter turned reliever in the playoffs that's not unusual 16 starts this year has consistently gone five or more innings in a lot of those starts theoretically could use him for another one or two innings but at this stage of the game if you're Jim Messie and you probably don't want your pitcher to see any batters more than once if you don't absolutely have to. You need to keep them off balance and halt this offense while you try to give your offense a shot to get back in it. Wilcox in, little number off the middle. Nice play by Harvin. Snatches it out of the air on one hop and will just flip over to first for the third out. The single gets stranded. The Beavers still lead it 7-1. to one. Moving on to the sixth when we come back. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank. And some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money and you'll see real human lives. We see it because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. They call me Prospects, since the day I was born as a diver's watch. 
The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Here's the game recap through five innings. Unicorns got one run back in the first, but since then it's been all Beavers. Zeros in just the third and fifth innings makes it seven to one. A trio of errors for the Unicorns, no mishaps for the Beavers. Five hits for the Corns, six for Birmingham Bloomfield. It's a barren bullpen for the Beavers right now because Greg Lokinen has breezed through the first five innings. Ten strikeouts, no walks, five hits, and only the one run back in the first. He'll face the three, four, and five here in the sixth, Aberrett, Baker, and Enriquez. Aberrett, the only extra base hit against Lokinen tonight. A double in the first. Takes strike one with the curveball. That curveball missing up, one and one. At this point, if you're John Dombrowski, manager for the Beavers, you let Lokanen go probably beyond the century mark. The deeper he goes, the more you have pitchers ready for tomorrow. This one's high and deep to left field. Chris Davis is going to watch that one go. Felix Aberrett with a blast, providing a little boost to the Unicorns. A solo shot to lead off the sixth. It's 7-2. to two. Unicorns not done yet. Felix Aberrett gets his second of the year and second on the board in the sixth. Squarely to left center towards the scoreboard, a deep part of the ballpark. Felix Aberrett jumped on a 1-1 pitch. Josh Baker, another home run hitter, pounds it foul. And broke his bet, so he'll need a new one. The home run to Aberrett, the third home run that Lokanen has conceded this year. Looks like as of right now, it's still going to be Lokanen's sixth inning. Nobody in the bullpen and nobody got up when Aberrett Hit the long home run. First home run of the playoffs for Felix Aberrett. We talked about it earlier, a guy who hit three in the championship last season against his current team, the Unicorns. A one curve ball, no balls and two strikes. Not sure what you're supposed to do with that pitch if you're Josh Baker. If you're a lefty, you can expect a curve ball coming from Lokanen. Really all hitters can expect it at some point, but uses it much more to that front door against lefties. There's another one, strike three called. Josh Baker puts his head down, turns around, nothing he can do with that pitch. Lokanen responds to the home run with a three pitch strikeout to the best slugger in the Unicorns lineup. Number 11 for Loken in tonight. Now Enriquez way out in front of a first pitch changeup off the end of the bat. 
job, 0-1. Comes back with the hard stuff, a fastball that just loops the other way to right field. Two hits in the inning for the Unicorns. Enriquez over at first with one down. Maybe things shaking a little bit for Lokanen in the sixth as he nears 100 pitches. Bullpen moving around a little bit now. Hard to tell with the hoodie. I think that's Jesse Galindo. First pitch to Weber. <laughs> what a curveball. A hammer of a curveball in for strike one. That's why the Unicorns turned the pitching machine to curveball and sat there all day looking at it on their off days leading up to tonight's matchup. Hasn't quite paid off yet, though. The 0 2. Nearly hit him. Unicorns are out hitting the Beavers 7 to 6. Three errors in the field for the Unicorns, though, is not a recipe for success. The 1 2. Softly chopped to third. A couple bounces. Ortega will field. His only play is at first. Enriquez safe over at second. Runner in scoring position with two outs. Weber advances him on the bounce out. 5-3 the put out. Good bat coming to the plate. Nick Pastor. Unicorns would love to get two runs across in this sixth. Keep it interesting as we move to the late stages of this game. Conversation between Stevenson and Lokanen. Loken in a lot of professional experience, both at the USPBL and outside of it. Played in college at Georgia Gwinnett. Curveball. Didn't find the zone, nearly hit Pastor. That's the first one we haven't really seen get back into the zone from a lefty. Loken in one of the first Georgia Gwinnett players to come to the USPBL and kind of start that pipeline where we've seen a ton of them in the league this year. Fastball outside. Then right out of college to the USPBL with the Mammoths in 2021. Came back in 2022 to defend his Pitcher of the Year title and left midway through the year for the American Association with the Lake Country Dock Hounds. Another fastball misses to make it three balls and no strikes. Only had four games in the American before joining the Frontier League with the Washington Wild Things this summer. And in six games, it did not go well there. An ERA above 13. Then came back to the USPBL and is pitching in his seventh outing since then. It's been a gem so far. In trouble here in the sixth. He finds a strike with the 3-0. Oh. Already a home run to lead off the inning from Felix Aberrett. Still no walks yet for Lokanen. Pastor has been in two three ball counts tonight. This being the second, waiting on the 3 1. And that's ball four. First walk of the night for Lokanen. It comes with two outs in the top of the sixth. Two on and two out for Patrick Baggett. Diesel stays in the dugout. Galindo hasn't even begun throwing yet over in the bullpen, so still not probably going to see Galindo until the seventh. And even then, we still might see Loken if he gets a quick at-bat here. Last couple at-bats have been longer. And time called. Pitch clock violation on Loken in ball one.
the 1-0. The first pitch 1-0 is a changeup inside, two balls and no strikes. 106 pitches for Lokanen. This is his sixth batter of the sixth. Bag it on the ground to the right side. That is past the diving Judd through the infield. Getting the stop sign was Enriquez at third. The Unicorns will play station to station. Load the bases with two outs for Donovan Curiel. Patrick Baggett comes through in a big spot. And the Unicorns are one swing of the bat from getting this game within a run. Curiel, no home runs on the season. Wouldn't be a better time for his first one. And Jim Essien is going to pinch hit for him. He's got Matulia and Gurgley on the bench. Can't quite see who that is. That's Phil Matulia, the right fielder, coming off the bench. A left-handed bat to face the lefty. Interesting move by Jim Essien. Maybe just wants a little bit more power as Matulia already has a home run this season, slugs it well. A 477 slugging percentage. Matulia, the 23 year old out of Houston, Texas. Joining later in the season, only 15 games, 13 starts. This will be number 16 for Phil. Enriquez at third, Pastor at second, Baggett over at first. Infield at no doubles. The outfield plays Matulia pretty straight up. Waits on the 0-1. Loken and set. Glove by the left ear. Lifts and fires. Thought about going fastball in and laid off. Good decision by Matulia late. And that pitches delivery to home. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. It stops right on home plate. Caught in between is Enriquez. Boy, what a bounce that took. And you can see Stevenson kind of hugging Lokanen. They take a deep breath. Enriquez thought about coming home, got about 40% of the way there and decided to go back. Matulia swung and missed, so it's strike two. And Lokanen, one pitch away from getting out of this jam. Wind aiding Lokanen coming in from left field in this at bat. The one two. High and outside with the fastball. Two two. Curve ball fouled. Seemed like it hung up there for a minute. Matulia, one of the only lefties to actually swing at that pitch. I think it's because he's been paying attention, knew it was probably going to be a strike, and tried to just spoil it. Really the only thing you can do with that pitch if you're a lefty. Bases loaded, 2-2. Swing and a miss. Got him with the curveball. Lokanen likely ends his night stranding the bases loaded and recording his 12th K. Unicorns get one back on the Felix Aberrett solo shot. It's seven to two as we move to the bottom of the sixth.
How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. Some defensive changes with Phil Matulia, the right fielder pinch hitting for the second baseman, Donovan Curiel. So Jared Weber, who was at third, moves over to second to replace Curiel. There you see Weber. Replacing Weber at third was the first baseman, Gooden. Replacing Gooden at first was the right fielder, Angel Diaz. And Phil Matulia now takes over in right field. So just to reset it all, Baker's in left, Pastor's in center, the pinch hitter Matulia staying in the game and remaining in right field. Gooden at third base, Baggett at shortstop, Jared Weber at second, Angel Diaz at first, and Ramon Enriquez still behind the dish. Here in the bottom of the sixth, Beavers batting. They gave one run back, but still leading 7-2 to two over the Unicorns. Top of the order due up, Davis, Ramirez, and Hilbrick. Davis one for one with two runs tonight, has walked twice, doubled in the fourth inning. It's now Jace Bauman out of the bullpen on the mound for the Unicorns, taking over for Tristan Harvin. Curveball missing. Bauman, a 6-8-2 ERA this year in 30 innings. Does lead the Unicorns in saves with five. Obviously not a save situation. They just need a good arm to come in and probably get two innings before they go to someone else. Struggle for Bauman has been walks this year. Over five per nine. Strikeouts just above seven. Would like both those numbers to trend in the opposite direction. Three and one on Davis. Bauman, five pitches, both fastballs, a four and two seam. Change up curveball slider, the secondary pitches. Three one. And outside he takes ball four. Third walk of the night for Chris Davis. He's reached in every plate appearance, and it's why he's a co-MVP of this league. So both starters likely out of this game as Lokanen probably threw his final pitch, recording his 12th strikeout to get out of the top of the sixth. You see Galindo keeping that arm warm over, arm warm over there in the bullpen. First pitch to Rudy Ramirez is a strike. Walk, strikeout, double tonight for Rudy. In on the hands with the fastball and fouled it. In ahead, 0-2. Ramirez waits, takes a high fastball.
One and two. Swing and a miss. Fastball got him up in the strike zone. Ramirez K's for the second time tonight. And that's the first one for Jace Bauman out of the bullpen. One on one out for Hillbrick. Ray, one for two. Single strikeout pop out. <laughs> Haven't seen Davis really test his luck over at first yet tonight. He's been there three times in his four plate appearances. All of them on walks. We mentioned that he leads the Beavers in steals, and it's a Beavers team that loves to get active on the base paths. And Hilbrick fouled it off his foot and down in a heap right behind home plate. They'll give him some time. Bauman will tie his shoe. Hilbrick's going to try to walk it off. Frankie Lux the assistant manager. Leaving first base, coming down to home plate and talk it over. Athletic trainer out as well. Not what you want to see if you're a Beavers fan right now. Hilbrick is going to stay in. Seems okay. Now the 1 1. Missing low with the fastball. 2 and 1. Move back to first. Despite Davis not going at all, he's faked a couple times over there at first base, and he's worked three throws back to the bag. Outside with the fastball again. Three balls and one strike. We mentioned the Unicorns inability to come back in games this season. Their record when trailing after six innings this year, which they're going to do at the least right now, 1-15 on the year. Only one comeback when trailing after six innings. Let alone trailing by five runs or possibly more as there's still only one on and one out in this sixth. Payoff pitch, lifted foul. Hilbrick, not a ton of power this year, just consistently getting hits left and right. Batting champion at 340, but a slugging percentage of just 485. Do the math, that's an ISO power of 145. 3-2 again, Davis goes, swing and a miss, throw down to second, Enriquez hesitated. Chance for a strike him out, throw him out as it was tipped into the glove, but Davis steals his 11th bag of the year. He'll break down on K's, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Bauman, makes it two outs, one in scoring position. Malik Bolin will now bat. First pitch, swings, lifts it to center. Shallow right center as it slices a little bit off the bat. Playable for the new second baseman, Jared Weber. 
Catches the third out, seven to two. Unicorns trail after six. Move on to the seventh. Do they have a comeback in them to keep their playoff hopes alive? We'll see you after this on the US PBL Network. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. What a night it was to start these playoffs for the starting pitcher for the Beavers left-hander Greg Lokanen. He goes six complete innings, gives up eight hits, two earned runs, only walks one batter, and strikes out 12. The 12th one coming with, the, with two outs and the bases loaded in the sixth inning to end his day. An unbelievable start for Greg Lokanen. Six complete innings. That curveball was devastating all night long. Got three looking strikeouts. The rest were swinging. Nine swinging strikeouts. And Jesse Galindo takes over to start the seventh. He'll face the top of the order, Gooden, Diaz, and Abaret. Galindo, the 25-year-old native of North Hollywood, California. Made six starts this year for the Beavers. A lot of them came early in the season. And he's a guy who even last year we saw start a little bit and pitch a little bit out of the bullpen, primarily bullpen a season ago. But in the second half of the season, it's been all bullpen for Galindo. First pitch to Gooden, leading off for the fourth time in this game. The 1-0 outside. Galindo a 4-2-9 ERA in his 22 appearances. 50 innings of work, most by any Beavers pitcher. Two balls, no strikes. Swings. Left side, racing over is Bolin as well as Ortega. Too far for either of them. Sixty-eight strikeouts for Jesse in fifteen a third innings. Comes out to twelve per nine. Nearly double his strikeout rate from last year. The walks below four per nine. He's been superb in both roles, starter and reliever. The two one dips under the zone as a changeup. Three balls and one strike. Fastball, changeup, curveball, slider. We've talked about it ad nauseum for Galindo, but for those that haven't been here, it's more than four pitches because he throws from two different arm slots, if you haven't noticed already. Comes kind of over the top, and then that sidearm, very deceptive in his delivery as to which it's going to be. There's the sidearm missing outside for ball four. Bauman works the leadoff walk. His first tonight, just the second for any unicorn hitter. And we all know, late in games, especially playoff games, leadoff walks can change the course of a game. 
Now Angel Diaz batting for the fourth time tonight. Two strikeouts and a flyout. Did not swing at the first pitch fastball low in the zone, missing for ball one. Up and in with the fastball this time. Two balls, no strikes. Good in a couple stolen bases this year, five. Caught once. Could see him try to get into scoring position. Tough to run on an arm like Luke Stevenson. And with Galindo's unorthodox delivery and the switch back and forth between over the top and sidearm, likely don't see Gooden running here. Outside, ball four. Haven't seen this all year from Jesse Galindo. He's only thrown one strike in the first nine pitches since coming out of the pen. This spells trouble for Diesel and his squad. Assistant manager Frankie Lux is going to come out and talk to the entire infield. Now you've got to face the heart of the order, starting with Felix Aberrett with two on and nobody out. Aberrett has already homered in this game to lead off the sixth inning. I think Frankie Luxa and the team just giving Galindo a little bit more time to breathe as that conversation now gets interrupted by our home plate umpire. Three mountain visits remaining for the Beavers. Everett, the only unicorn really with a good night with how good Lokanen has been. Two for three with a pair of runs in that home run. Well outside with the slider on the first pitch. Galindo has given up three home runs this year. Much better of late. Curveball finds the bottom of the zone for a called strike. Pretty even split between lefties and righties. The lefty Baker is next behind Aberrett. And faking the double steal were the runners. Galindo just throws a slider outside from the sidearm slot. Talked about the Unicorns 1 in 15 record when trailing after six innings. The Beavers win leading after six. 12 and 3. Way up. And Jesse Galindo just does not have it right now. That record at risk if this inning continues at this rate. He's thrown two strikes. Two on, nobody out. Aberrett with a home run already. The 3 1. And he walked him again. Three straight walks to load the bases with nobody out. And in back-to-back -back innings, the Unicorns have loaded the bases. And now you've got no other hitter you would want in this situation. The home run leader this season for the Unicorns with five, Josh Baker will now bat. Not going to see a pinch hitter here. Now Galindo's going to take even more time. Baker calm at home plate. You can just see the nerves in Jesse Galindo's demeanor right now. Lift that glove way above his head to come set at the stomach. Fastball tailing inside for a called strike one. Baker one for three, a pair of strikeouts. Wind blowing in from the outfield. They play Baker to pull. And strike two with another fastball. Gooden at third, Diaz at second, Aberrett at first. All reaching by a walk. Galindo out of the bullpen in this seventh inning. 
Trying to keep this lead right where it's at, and he's got to step off ahead 0-2. Now comes set, the 0-2. Outside with the curve. Baker triggered, but not a serious thought. One ball, two strikes. Not getting the call with the fastball. The best one we've seen so far from Galindo, up around 90. Baker took it all the way. Lefty is a little bit better against Galindo this year than righties. The 2-2. Two -two. Lifted to center field. That's hard hit. Davis ranging over a hill. Make the catch as he leaps up. Both runners from second and third will tag. So Gooden scores and puts run number three on the board for the Unicorns. Diaz to third, and they're chipping away. A productive out for Josh Baker on the sack fly. He hit it hard, too. Just a little too hard as it hung up for Davis. More than he thought, he had to reach up right before that ball got to him. And that's just the first out. And Barrett wasn't able to tag from first. The runners on the corner is for Enriquez. Fastball tailing into the righty is a strike. On the ground, right side, Judd has to race over. He won't be able to make the double play. His only play is at first, so Enriquez is out. Diaz scores. One more run across. It's 7-4. Next up for the is the second baseman for their team, Jared Weber. Aberrett safe at second. Enriquez out on the bounce out. Gets an RBI. Now Jared Weber up. So a couple of productive outs for the Unicorns. They're within three. Weber this year, one home run. Softly to the third base side, it'll roll foul. Very clear that the playoff nerves might be getting to some of these pitchers tonight. We saw Huffman, voted pitcher of the year, struggle to start for the Unicorns. Now Galindo, who's been fantastic all year long, struggling here in the seventh. Doubt we'll see him for the eighth. Here's the 1-1 one -one with two down, swing and a miss, strike two. Weber down to an E. Fastball missing low. Weber has a hit tonight. It's that pop fly single that didn't hit the glove of Marcus Judd as it was skied into the air on the right side. He works ball three here for a full count. Lifted to left field, bowling over. Now into foul territory towards the bullpen. Can't make the grab. Right in that awkward spot near the corner of the pen. He did a nice job surveying the area as he got over there. Good job tracking the ball as well. Not much he can do 
in that situation, and the Unicorns may have gotten lucky. Two have already scored this inning. Make it a three-run game. Weber trying to cut it in even more, and he takes ball four. Four walks this inning for Galindo. He hasn't given up a hit yet, and two runs have come across. Walk, walk, walk. Sack fly to score one, ground out to score another, and the fourth walk to Jared Weber. Pastor's got a little bit of pop, two home runs. One swing could tie it. Home runs so critical in playoff baseball, especially here in this league. In a down year for the long ball. Off the end of the bat, just barely tipped foul. Pastor hitting 274, still looking for his first hit tonight, has reached on a walk. That came last inning. A 1-1. One, one. Inside, good block by Stevenson on a fastball that hit the dirt. Stevenson, a very good young defensive catcher. Might see him next year in the league. Outside curve ball. Three balls, one strike. A hitter's count for Pastor who needs a pitch to hit. Can tie this game with one big swing. Unicorns will just take any runs they can get. The 3-1. Fouled away the opposite side back to the seats. Full count again, payoff pitch, runners go, lifted foul. The moment building between Nick Pastor and Jesse Galindo. Pitch number seven is a big one, runners will be off again. Full count with two outs, there they go, and another foul ball. Neither one willing to give in. Galindo back with the off speed. Not going to throw Pastor a good hitter, a fastball likely in this situation. Certainly doesn't want to walk him to load the bases again. The 3 2. Hard hit into right. Coming in, charging as Hillbrick dives. He made the catch. Delayed call from the field umpire and Ray Hilbrick might have just saved this game for the Beavers. Stops at least a run. It stays 7-4. Seventh inning stretch. Beavers leading it by three. They'll bat in the seventh when we come back on the U.S. PBL Network. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. 
Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Now Matt Colucci's turn in the bottom of the seventh for the for the Unicorns in a much closer game than we might have expected. Those three runs don't feel as big as they may seem. It'll be Stubbs, Ortega, and Stevenson against the 24-year-old native of Amherst, New York. Colucci, 25 appearances, 32-plus innings. An ERA just below five. Less than four walks per nine and nearly 11 strikeouts per nine innings. He's been very good out of the bullpen this year, and they need another good inning from him. Bauman gave him a good inning last time in the sixth. Walked one, but then struck out two and got a pop out to get out of the inning. Lefty, righty, righty this inning for Colucci. Much better against right-handed hitters. Opponents have hit him pretty hard this year. 308 in total and nearing 400 from the left side. The 1-0. Stubbs fouls it the other way. J.D. tonight reached on a fielder's choice back in the first. That was the throwing error that scored the first runs of the game for the Beavers to make it 2-1. to one. Tips that one foul, 1-2. One and two. The only other time he's reached tonight. One, two. High and away with the fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Colucci, a two seam fastball, the only one that he has. Mixed with a cutter, curveball, and changeup. Four pitches for the SUNY Brockport graduate. Swing and a miss. Stubbs down on strikes to start the bottom of the seventh. Strikeout number 40 on the season for Colucci. Ortega still the only Beaver to not reach base one way or another tonight. 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout that came back in the third inning. Mentioned how well he's been swinging the bat since he got here. Five home runs in just 20 games. The 1-0, swing and a miss. Right through the fastball. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball, right side, and foul not a play. Ortega digs back in. Colucci comes set. The one two with nobody on and one out. Broke his bat, shattered it right on the handle. Over to the first baseman, Diaz, who will underhand flip it to Colucci covering. Quickly two up and two down. That'll bring up Luke Stevenson, a walk and a single tonight. There you see the remains of that bat. That two-seam fastball that tailed inside just ate it up. Hey, 
Curveball, well placed. Strike one. The 0 1. Skied, and I mean skied, just beyond second base. Baggett is there. He'll drift over and see it into his glove. A 1 2 3 inning, much needed for the Unicorns. They've loaded the bases in each of the last two innings that they've batted. They could use that again in the eighth, trying to come back down by three runs, running out of opportunities. It's 7 4 when we come back. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Coppers Fields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. The lefty, Brennan Cox, out in the bullpen, out of the bullpen, onto the mound for the Beavers in the eighth. He'll face Baggett Matulia, who pinch hit for Curiel back in the sixth, and the top of the order, Lucas Gooden, when it flips that way. Jesse Galindo came on last inning, and sure, Diesel Dombrowski expected Galindo, with how good he's been this year, to maybe go more than just the seventh, but four walks. Two runs, even a no hit, still too many for Galindo to come back out in the eighth. Cox, 24 years old, native of Detroit. Six seasons playing for his current manager as a, who was a volunteer assistant coach at Wayne State. He's made 24 appearances, only a pair of starts. The rest out of the bullpen of 5-4-0 ERA in 35 innings for number 35. The lefty delivers to Baggett, who's faced nothing but lefties today. All three of his plate appearances, this being the fourth, have come from the right side. He's one for three so far. Fastball high and outside. Four seam. A sweeping slider and a circle change for Brennan Cox. That sweeper is a nasty one. Can eat up right-handed hitters. Unicorns really struggled against the lefty Lokanen. Perhaps maybe why Cox gets designated out of the bullpen. Beavers have more lefties than anybody on their pitching staff. On the ground, right side, and easy scoop up for J.D. Stubbs. One down for Phil Matulia. Mentioned that if that not so important football game that's going on right now, start of the NFL season, Lions and Chiefs in Arrowhead Stadium. Little update on that. Halftime, Chiefs lead the Lions 14 to seven. They will get the ball to start the second half. Not sure how many of you watching are paying attention to that game, but I know around here, a lot of the natives, myself included, that game is all the buzz tonight. 1-0 and a little soft tap foul.
Tulia struck out in his one pinch hit at bat in the sixth. Lokanen struck him out with the bases loaded and two outs to get out of that jam. Jim Essien kind of went all in on that at bat to get his team back in this game. Little did he know he would get the bases loaded again the next inning on a couple of walks from Jesse Galindo. Sweeper not getting the call. Very close, some groans from the crowd, but it's two and two. But Jim Essien, who values his defense a lot, one of the better defenses in the league, has had to shift it around a ton with Matulia pinch hitting for the second baseman. Right side, and that will s just slide foul. Thought it was going to stay fair for a long time. Still two and two. <laughs> Opponents hitting 291 against Brennan Cox this year. Pretty even splits between left and right. Both of them right around 290. Tulia this season against left-handed pitchers has not seen too many. He's now equipped with a new bat. He's only had six at-bats against lefties, two hits in him. Cox set on the 2-2. Right side of the infield, that'll get through for a base hit. Unicorns really putting it together in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings. They've had a base runner or more now in each one of them. And with Matulia, the nine hole, getting the base hit, that flips the lineup over for Lucas Gooden. Do the Unicorns have an improbable comeback in them? Gooden's one for three with a walk and a run scored tonight. Definitely a guy you want at the plate. The 1-0. -oh. Unlikely, but Matulia could steal it first. He's three for three on the year. 2-0, fastball, strike one. Unlikely in a fastball count, but I just think in this at bat in general, the Unicorns, the way they run the bases, they're pretty content taking their time and letting the hits speak for themselves and bring around the runners. Big swing for Gooden on the high fastball, two balls and two strikes. Last thing they want is a double play right here. Beavers, decent at turning the double play this year. They have a good combination up the middle to do so. Nobody's turned more than the hoppers. Unicorns have bounced into the most double plays on the season. The three, two. Just fouled straight back. A lot of fastballs in, as, in this at bat against Gooden. Seen dozens of 3 2 counts tonight. Gooden calls timeout. I think he might have had something in his eye. But on both sides, we've seen plenty of three ball, two strike counts. Tulia hasn't done anything over there at first. A short primary lead. The payoff pitch. Lifted left side. Long run for Ortega. And he won't get there as it'll get back about five or six rows.
could see the urgency from both Ortega and Stevenson to get over there. They know this game is still very well within reach for the Unicorns, trailing only by three runs. They had the tying run at the plate in the seventh. One more base runner, and they'd have him again here in the eighth. Three, two, hard hit to the gap and right. This will be extra bases. Racing around second is Matulia. Probably going to get the stop sign at third. He will. Lucas Gooden with a clutch double here in the eighth. Unicorns have the tying run at home plate in two in scoring position. It is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. Strap in. Unicorns still have five outs left to tie or take the lead. The winner will play the Hoppers tomorrow for a chance to go to the championship. And Diesel is going to come out of the dugout, meet on the mound. And he's going to go to the bullpen. Brennan Cox only gets three batters. A single and a double within those three is enough that Diesel has seen. He's going to go to the bullpen, and the Beavers make a pitching change. Unicorns, one swing away from tying it. See if they can do it after the break when we come back on the U.S. PBL Network. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. So it'll be John Bucalaire on the mound for the Beavers. Taking over for Brennan Cox, who only goes a third of an inning. He's up two hits, and that's it. Bucalaire, a reliever of the year candidate, rightfully so. 2-3-8 ERA in 22 and two-thirds innings. All of his appearances have been out of the bullpen. Leads the Beavers and saves with three. Has a nasty three-pitch mix, forcing fastball slider sinker from that unorthodox setup and delivery. A Madonna graduate. Bucalaire spent a little bit of time on the injured list at the end of the season for the Beavers. Missed about two of the last three weeks of the year. Came back and threw a couple innings before the regular season was over. 13 walks, 31 strikeouts. 12.3 strikeouts per nine innings. Opponents hitting just 217 against Bucalaire, and he couldn't come in in a bigger spot so far in this game. Angel Diaz represents the tying run, and he will be pinch hit for as Seth Gurgley steps on. Gurgley, brand new to the Unicorns, only three games under his belt so far. Tall Madge, Ohio native. First pitch outside from Bucalaire. One ball, no strikes. Jim Essien going all in in the late stages of this game. Big swing and a miss on the fastball. Gurkley wants to tie this game with one swing. He can. But Unicorns will just take a base hit that likely scores two here. 
Played in the Big Ten one season collegiately, his first college season with the Boilermakers at Purdue. Strike two called on the sinker outside. Then transferred to Indiana State for three years. 156 total games in college, seven home runs, 792 career OPS. He's two for eight in his professional career here with the Unicorns. And that misses low with the fastball, two balls and two strikes. Bucolair kind of reaching, wanted that one. It's Matulia at third, Gooden at second. Singles and doubles for them. The 2-2 lifted high to left. Going back is Bolin just short of the warning track. He'll pick it up. Matulia is going to tag and bring this to a two-run ball game. Another sack fly, another productive out for the Unicorns. Two down in the eighth, and still the tying run is at the plate in Felix Aberrett. Aberrett. Catcher by day, designated hitter tonight. Already a home run in this game, back in the sixth. Already a multi-playoff home run game under his belt in his career. And an off speed nearly got away from Stevenson up above the strike zone. One ball, no strikes. Gooden couldn't tag from second, so he's still in scoring position. Aberrett pops it up right side. Chucks the bat in frustration as Judd makes the catch. Unicorns get another back, but still have some work to do. They trail it seven to five. They need to stop the Beavers one more time in the bottom of the eighth. Can they do it? We'll find out after the break on the US PBL Network. The Dave and Buster's method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and discover the funner you hidden within you. The you that doesn't think about adult things and stuff. Ashley, I don't want to hear anything about your car registration when we're at Dave & Buster's. Okay. The you, you want to be. Let the Dave & Buster's method illuminate you. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. Fifth Third Extra Time helps you do you better. So kick back and relax. You have extra time to avoid overdraft fees. Fifth Third Extra Time. This is banking a fifth third better. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. We're the financial champion of Michiganders. Whether you're a goal getter or dream chaser, an empty nester or up and comer, anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Ben Kreisen. Gets the call for the biggest inning of the year for the Unicorns. Trailing by two runs. They need to leave it there to keep it close in the top of the ninth. If they can get through this bottom of the eighth. Kreisen will face Judd, Wilcoxon, and Davis, the eight, nine, and one hitters. 23-year-old native of Punta Gorda, Florida. 11 appearances this year, all of them in relief, an ERA below four. 11 and two thirds innings for Kreisen. Leads the Unicorns in strikeouts per nine at 15.4. A very good average for the right-hander out of Murray State. Also spent a season at Ave Maria in Florida and Florida A&M. Kreisen, four seam slider, curveball, change up is the mix. Yeah. 
First pitch to Judd is a curveball that misses. One ball, no strikes. Judd put it foul. He's one for three tonight. Scored after the bunt, single in the second. Another foul ball for Marcus. Five runs on 10 hits and three errors for the Unicorns. Seven runs on six hits and no errors for the Beavers. Kreisen set for the one two. Lifts and fires. Over to second base where Weber will charge and boot it. No play. That's actually now Pastor at second base, the center fielder. More changes for the Unicorns after Seth Gurgley pitch hit last inning. Gurgley, an outfielder by trade. And he's out in center field. So he takes over in center. Pastor moves to second. And a bunt shown for Wilcoxon. Judd advancing to second. Nobody covering first. Did they get him in time? I think they did with the tag. Wilcoxon out. As he kind of awkwardly tried to avoid it and slide. Judd advanced to second. So a runner in scoring position. The Beavers could use some insurance here. Davis swings and misses at the first pitch. <laughs> Lifts that one foul, no balls and two strikes. So just cleaning up the defense for the Unicorns with all their substitutions. Baker still in left. Gurgley now the pinch hitter in center. Matulia stays in right. Pastor took over for Weber at second. Weber and Diaz, or excuse me, Weber and Gooden move back to their original spots. Gooden's at first and Weber at third. That switched after the pinch hit for Donovan Curiel with Angel Diaz. who is now out of the game after he was pitch hit for by Gurgley. One and two on Davis. Oh, that got away. They're going to throw it on to third. Judd, not in time. They didn't go for the tag, though. Boy, I thought Judd would have been out. But Weber decided not to reach for the tag. It was a good throw from Enriquez behind home plate. That might be big with only one out. Now the infield's drawn in on the two and two. Judd has plenty of speed to score on pretty much anything. Curveball, strike three called. Delayed strike three called. Davis kind of gasps as he didn't expect that. Kreisen gets a big strike out there. Ramirez takes a fastball up. One.
1-0. Skied over to the right. Good in racing over. So is Enriquez. This will get back to the seats, though. down for the Beavers. They've been the worst hitting team this season with two outs. They just need anything here to add one more insurance run. <laughs> Lifted right side. This will be a long run for Matulia. He's not going to get there. Beavers would really like this insurance run because of how it changes the situation in the top of the ninth. As it stands right now, should the Unicorns get a base runner in the top of the ninth, they'd have the tying run at the plate. And that's what you never want. That would be the third time tonight as well. The one-two. Have to give it a beat before making the call with our home plate umpire, who's had a couple delayed strike calls tonight. Could hear him on the field mic, though. Two and two. <laughs> Swing and a miss. In the dirt, Enriquez will throw down to first, and the Unicorns have three outs to stay alive in the 2023 season, trailing by two runs, the top of the ninth, when we come back on the U.S. PBL Network. We build roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers. Our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are Operating Engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. It all comes down to this for the Unicorns. Trailing 7-5 to five in the top of the ninth. They've got their four, five, and six hitters due up. Baker, Enriquez, and Weber. John Bucolair came on last inning after Brennan Cox gave up two hits in his first three batters. Gave up a sack fly and a pop out to get out of the eighth. Now he's got the ninth. Righty on lefty matchup. On the ground on the first pitch to Judd. Scoops it up. One down. Best home run hitter is out of the game now for the Unicorns. Next up, the catcher, number six, Enriquez. Enriquez will come up. He's got a little bit of pop. One home run in his first 30 at bats. He's two for four tonight with an RBI on the ground out back in the seventh. Strike called on the fastball. Bucolaire significantly better against right-handed hitters than lefties. Lefties hit him for nearly 300 this year. The 0 1. Curveball off the glove of Stevenson inside. One ball and one strike. 
Enriquez had a single in the first, struck out in the fourth, singled again in the sixth before the RBI ground out in the seventh. Native of San Bruno, California, swings and misses. Friends with his teammate Felix Averett since their childhood. Didn't know they were going to be playing to the go together in the USPBL until Enriquez called Felix and said, hey, I'm coming. What team do you play for? Yeah. Aberrett answered with the unicorns, and that's when Enriquez put it together that they were going to be teammates. Bucalaire set. Two balls, two strikes. Bit of a hanging curve ball that Enriquez was a little late on and spoiled it foul. <laughs> Up with the fastball, three balls and two strikes. Bucolaire looks like he might have slipped after landing on his second step of the landing. Not the original plant. 3-2. And another spoil from Enriquez. Just over three hours played in this first round of the 2023 playoffs. Swing and a miss, strike three. Enriquez down, and there's only one out left for the Unicorns. First strikeout for Bucalair since he came on. And it's all up to Jared Weber. The bench is empty for the Unicorns. Cannot pinch it anymore. Nick Pastor would be next should it get there. Weber has reached twice tonight. Once by a walk, the other by that pop fly that was almost caught by Judd. Strike out and a ground out otherwise. Pucolaire is retired four in a row, looking for number five. Hard hit on the left field line and just hooking foul. Good swing for Weber, but he falls behind. No balls and two strikes. Beavers one strike away from advancing. Winner plays the Hoppers tomorrow at 7.05. Bucalaire set, no balls and two strikes. Here it is. And it gets away from Stevenson outside with the breaking ball. The one, two, fouled away again. Think about this Unicorns team falling behind early, down seven to one at one point. They have battled back into this game. A run in the sixth, two in the seventh, one in the eighth. They've held the Beavers scoreless since the fourth. The one, two again, and another foul. Plenty of at-bats like this, long at-bats hanging in there. They just haven't had the big inning or the big swing to really change the momentum of this game. They do have the only home run from Felix Abaret. It was a solo shot to lead off the sixth to make it 7-2. One more time. And another foul. Weber hanging tough. Unicorns need one base runner. Bucalaire gets the sign, sets. The one, two again. Out into left, and the Unicorns get that base runner here. A line drive single off the bat of Jared Weber, and we're not done yet. Here comes Nick Pastor. OPS above 700, a pair of home runs this year. 
No better time for his third one. And Bucalair steps off just before the pitching clock struck zero with one second left. Pastor swings at the first pitch and fouls it. We have seen a couple ninth inning, even a couple two outs in the ninth inning comebacks this year. Again, the Unicorns 1-15 when trailing after six innings. The 0-1 back up the middle. Judd races over there, flips to second. Wilcoxon came off the bag. What an unbelievable effort by Marcus Judd and Ben Wilcoxon, but it's not enough. This game will not end. The glove flip from Judd on an outstanding play just pulled Wilcoxon inches off the second base bag with his right foot. And within that span, Jared Weber, credit on the hustle, slid in safely. That's a hit for Nick Pastor, an infield single. And now the go-ahead run in Patrick Baggett, who doesn't have a home run this year. Digs into the left-handed batter's box. His first time batting as a lefty tonight. First pitch, takes a strike. Baggett in his first four appearances, one for four. A couple of contact outs, a single in the sixth, a strikeout in the second. He's come up big in some big spots this year for the Unicorns. The 0-1 is high. It's a lot of fastballs from Bucalair in this high pressure situation. The outfield is in, infield. The corner's at no doubles, the 1-1. One, one. High again. Two balls, one strike. The Unicorns, 226 as a team with two outs this season, second best in the league. The 2-1. Swing and a miss, half cut, bag it. Went for the high fastball that time, Bucalaire Stayed with it, and got a swing and a miss. And Baggett will take some extra time with two strikes. Unicorns trailing by two runs. They've got two on and two outs. Deuces wild. Bucalair crouches in. Checks the runner at second. That's Weber, Pastor at first. Outside, it'll be a full count. Mentioned it already. We've had so many of these full count tonights, and this one can decide the fate of this game. Runners will be off with the pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Here it is. Outside, ball four. Baggett works a walk with two outs in the ninth. And it'll be up to Phil Matulia. How about Bucalair? Tough to get this last out. With two outs, he has to face three straight lefties. And we mentioned lefties hit him nearly 300 this year. Frankie Luxa coming out. There is movement in the bullpen for the Beavers. Should they need to go to it? It's Michael Esposito who has been unhittable all season long. Do you risk an arm to go get one out? Bucalair shakes his head no. Luxa heads back to the dugout. The bullpen door stays closed. Matulia already singled and scored since pinch hitting. Came on in the sixth and struck out against Lokinen. But he singled and scored last inning. 
He was the fifth run for the Unicorns. Base hit could tie it. Base is loaded. First pitch, swing and a foul in on the hands, a fastball. Seems like we've been building towards this moment all game long. Unicorns, bases loaded. Chance to get back in this game, and they've done it again in the ninth. This time with two outs. Bucalaire just needs one pitch. The 0 1. Swing and a miss, no balls and two strikes. And Matulia will take his extra time. For the third time this inning, the Unicorns are down to their last strike. So close and so far from tying this game. The 0-2, little softly to third. This is going to be a tough play. Ortega goes to first. Matulia, be safe. Here comes the tying run. The Unicorns have done it. Unbelievable. With two outs, they tie it in the ninth on a broken bat single. Stubbs had to stretch for it. Matulia might have beat it anyways, but he dropped it. Weber scored easily on contact. And then Pastor, the heads up play to come around and tie this game at seven in the ninth. The Unicorns have stormed all the way back from down six runs at the start of the sixth inning. Baggett made it over to third. He's the go-ahead run with two outs now. In the top of the order, Lucas Gooden takes a ball. Unbelievable. Gooden to left. That's through. Unicorns take the lead. Baggett races home with a finger in the air. That one is their lead now. Two outs in the ninth, and three runs have come across. The Unicorns are now in front. Gurgley, the pinch hitter in the eighth, is now up to bat. He had a sack fly to score a run and contribute to this comeback. Checked his swing and a strike. Come on, baby. <laughs> Lifts this one to left, softly sliced. Bolin is there under it, and he makes the catch. Down to their last strike three separate times. The Unicorns have taken the lead in the top of the ninth. They're now three outs away from facing the Hoppers tomorrow. Beavers batting when we come back. With a transforming world, we can see how drastically the world is heading towards automation. And so we need 24-7 surveillance and security systems for our homes and businesses to avoid any theft or breach of privacy. Jarpcom brings the installation of security cameras to the tip of your fingers with our state-of-the-art mobile app. Jarpcom also provides surveillance monitoring of your entire property with flexible options that offer a dependable solution to be scaled to fit any domestic or commercial need. Contact JARPCOM today for a free estimate at 800-369-0374 or look us up on the web at JARPCOM.com. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. 
Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. If it was written in a movie script, you wouldn't believe it. The Unicorns down 7-1 to one in the start of the 6th. Get 1 in the 6th, 2 in the 7th, 1 in the 8th, and trailing by 2 with 2 outs, get 3 runs in the ninth. Beavers now need a run to tie and 2 to win. They've got Hilbrick, Bolin, and Stubbs, 3, 4, and 5 due up. Ben Kreisen came on in the 8th. He's still out for the Unicorns. The 1-0 to Hilbrick. Hard foul off his foot again. If you remember, a couple at-bats ago, Hilbrick fouled it off his foot and went down, and he just disgusting look on his face trying to walk it off. Highest average in the USPBL this season for Ray Hilbrick. One for four tonight with a pair of strikeouts. The 1-1 one -one from Kreisen. Check swing went too far, I think. He did not. So on the appeal, it's two balls and a strike. Kreisen comes set. Delivers, and this is hard hit into the gap and left. Racing over is Gurgley. That's at the base of the wall in the gap. Gurgley picks it up and quickly throws it in, and Ray Hilbrick leads it off with a double. Tying run in scoring position. And if anybody can win it with one swing, it's Malik Bolin. Seven home runs on the year. He's gone quiet for a couple weeks. He hit two home runs in a game against the Hoppers two weeks ago. Hasn't had any since. Doesn't have a hit tonight, but has reached twice. First pitch, fastball low. Kreisen came on in the eighth. Judd reached on an error. Wilcoxon bunted him over to second, but then Kreisen struck out Davis and Ramirez to get out of that inning. Bolin skies it. Foul territory left side. Gooden, that's actually Weber now, over, makes the catch. And we apologize if you heard Bolin there on our field, Mike. Now J.D. Stubbs. One on, one out. Base hit will tie it. Fastball up as a hush falls over Jimmy John's field. Intense innings in the last three innings of this game. Fouled straight back on the 1-0. Hilbrick at second. Large primary lead. Kreisen comes set with the glove at his chin. Checks the runner. Delivers the 1-1. Swing and a miss right on top of it. Strike two. Enriquez came out from behind home plate out of his crouch to make sure the runner didn't advance. Still just cannot believe the Unicorns are in a position to win this game. The one-two. Swing and a miss. It gets away from Enriquez. Hilbrick going to third. This could be the game. He is safe. Umpire didn't make a signal. I guess that just means he's safe. 
And Stubbs is safe over at first because on the drop third strike, Enriquez elected to go get the runner at third. So runners on the corners now on the drop third strike. Hillbrick 90 feet away from tying it. The Unicorns a double play away from winning it. Neither Stubbs or Ortega run particularly fast, and because of that, I think Stubbs is going to be pinch ran for. Stubbs is coming off the field, and it looks like Alex Crump, the backup catcher tonight, is going to get his helmet and head over to first. Still just kind of perplexed why the third base umpire didn't make a signal on Hilbrick's slide into third. Evidently, he's safe. Stubbs at first, Ortega at the plate. It's no longer Stubbs, it's Alex Crump now. First pitch, Ortega swings late on a 90 mile an hour fastball riding through the zone. The 0-1, swing and a miss again with the high fastball, 0-2. Surprised to see Kreisen working up in the zone, needing a ground ball here. Unicorns get the second most ground balls of any pitching staff. Most by ratio when you compare it to flyouts. The 0-2, good pick by Enriquez. Snatched it just before it hit the dirt. And that saves the tying run. One ball, two strikes. Crump the pinch runner at first. Hilbrick led things off with a double in this inning. He's over at third now. The 1-2, lifted right side, shallow, racing over his past store. He'll make the catch. Last out now for the Beavers. Unicorns were down to their last out with three separate batters last inning. And how the tables have turned. Jim Essien comes out and he might take the ball from Ben Kreisen for the final out. There's action in the bullpen for the Unicorns, but it doesn't look like anybody's loose and ready to go. It's Jacob Harsini, typically a starter, getting ready out there. This is just a long conversation, probably strategy talk going on. The infield disperses back to their positions. Luke Stevenson, the catcher, at the plate. Stevenson's one for four, singled in the fifth. Excuse me, one for three with the single in the fifth, walked in the second. And takes a high fastball. Again for Kreisen, it's four-seam fastball, slider, curveball, changeup. Fastball has been the main one so far. The 1-0. High with the fastball again. Stevenson in a good count. He's seen two already. Good chance he sees a third fastball here, but more in the zone. Lifted foul. Well, if anything... If tomorrow is going to be anything like tonight, be sure to join us right here on the U.S. PBL Network by whatever means you're currently watching. Winner of this game will play the Hoppers. All night, it's looked like that would be the Beavers. Now they're one out away from it being the Unicorns. Swing and a miss, and they're now one strike away.
Hillbrick, the runner at third. He is the tie. Crump could be the winner at first. Stevenson at the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Here it is. High and another full count. And this game wouldn't be over if we didn't decide it on a full count pitch. Crump will be going on the pitch, so anything in the gap could possibly win the game for the Beavers. The 3-2. Fouled back. And the crowd laughs in amusement at just what craziness this game has been. It doesn't want to end. Hillbrick's looking for anything in the dirt. He'll be going on contact. Crump was going on the pitch. Stevenson's just trying to put it in play. The payoff pitch. And another foul ball. At least eight pitches in this at bat for Luke Stevenson. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. Unicorns win. Down six runs in the sixth. They storm back in the last four innings. Put up three in the ninth with two outs and advance to the semifinals tomorrow. Beavers had the tie 90 feet away and couldn't bring him home. Heartbreak end to the season for the Beavers. They will not defend their title. The Unicorns have a chance to win their fifth if they keep running. Unbelievable game. Unbelievable finish. What a way to get the playoff started here in the 2023 USPBL Championship Weekend. Kara Wolfbauer has Lucas Gooden, who had the go-ahead hit. And he is our player of the game here on the US PBL Network. Be sure to come back tomorrow, same time, 7.05. It'll be Unicorns and Hoppers, a storied rivalry in this league. As you see the breakdown, zeros, other than the first for the Unicorns, all the way until the fifth. And then six, seven, eight, and nine, just chipping away a little bit at a time. Just their second win this season when trailing after six innings in 17 attempts. Unicorns win it by the final score of eight to seven over the Beavers. Lucas Gooden, the go ahead hit in the ninth. He had three on the day, two singles and a double. Also scored after walking in the seventh. He finishes three for five in six plate appearances. He is our player of the game. Kara Wolfbauer standing by with him down on the field. Thanks, Johnny. I'm here with our Detroit News player of the game, Lucas Gooden. And for good reason, like many of you recently just saw, in the top of the ninth, the Unicorns were down by quite a few runs, three runs. They scored three runs to put them up in the ninth, eight to seven. You were the single to put you guys up to eight. So tell me how the team was really keeping you motivated tonight as you were stepping up to the plate there. Yeah, things weren't going our way early, so we just figured uh, in the late innings we had to scrap our way back, uh, hit by hit. I mean, there was a couple walks there late, so we just knew we had to take advantage of that. So, uh, good team win. You guys rallied really well, especially coming off of last week. And last Saturday, you guys did the same exact thing, but against the Hoppers. And now you're facing the Hoppers tomorrow night. So, tell me how you guys are now starting to look forward off of this win here on Championship Weekend. Yeah, I mean, we had a a uh, good offensive game tonight. We just got to continue to build upon that and uh, be, continue to be aggressive at the plate, take what the game gives us, um, and just approach it the same way tomorrow. 
Well, I wish you guys good luck tomorrow. This is Lucas Gooden, our Detroit News Player of the Game. His family's right there, his wife and his family's all right there cheering him on. So congratulations, Lucas, on leading the Unicorns now into a great championship weekend. Thanks for joining us here on the broadcast and here at Jimmy John's Field. We'll see you back here tomorrow for playoff game number two, Unicorns and Hoppers. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Wolfbauer. This is Lucas Gooden. We'll see you next time at Jimmy John's Field. Thanks, Kara. Unicorns and Beavers. What a start to the playoffs. The Unicorns storm back in the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, combining for seven runs in those four innings after just one in the previous five to win it eight to seven in heartbreaking late fashion over the Beavers. It'll be the Unicorns tomorrow against the Hoppers, 7.05, trying to extend their improbable championship run. For Carol Wolfbauer, I'm Brendan Shabath. We'll send you off with one look back at the go-ahead run for the Unicorns to win this game. They'll play tomorrow against the Hoppers as they beat the Beavers 8-7. The 3-2. Swing and a miss. Unicorns win. Down six runs in the sixth. They storm back in the last four innings. Put up three in the ninth with two outs and advance to the semifinals tomorrow. If I hit a home run, then you know what's going out of the park. Yeah, bases loaded, we ain't letting up. It's going back to back, you can count it up. United, we stand together. Divided, we fall. Ain't no turning back, we done came too far to turn around and have a seat now. We don't compare. Then you know what's going out of the park. Yeah. Bases loaded, we ain't letting up. It's going back to back, you can count it up. United, we stand together. Divided, we fall. Ain't no turning back. We done came too far to turn around and have a seat now. We don't compare, cause we unicorns. Unicorn. Illuminate the dark with my uniform. My uniform. Every time you see me standing.